That was the high point. It's all downhill from here. Speaking of downhill, WCW Monday Nitro number 250, also July 3rd of the year 2000. And it was so good last week. Raw was so great last oh, week. Oh, Raw, yeah. Nitro, Nitro was, well, by Nitro standards, was amazing last week. So we had a recap of Goldberg Duggan from last week. Then on Thunder, Horace attacks Jarrett. Horace loses a title match. Vampiro is haunted by a guy. Cat has problems with Awesome and Scott Steiner. Somehow this leads to Awesome against Scott Steiner, and Awesome wins with heel ref Cat. Okay. <laughs> the Cat is on the phone with Eric Bischoff. I can barely hear a word he says. I'm just going to read my notes here. Steiner is suspended for a week for using Steiner recliner. Cat and Awesome have a talk about making the call that I don't understand. I wrote, I can barely hear a word he says. He said he fined Scott Steiner for using the recliner, which he banned last week. He did? Apparently, Eric is yelling at him for interfering last week in the main event, because there's a no interference rule. Shat said the ref was out, and he did what he had to do as commissioner to make sure that they had a finish. I can't believe you got all of this. They at least explained that. I'll give him credit for that. And then Mike Awesome shows up and wants to know if Shat made the call. I presume the call was, get a bunch of ambulances here. Was it? I think... I don't know what else it would have there been. There were a bunch of ambulances there. Yeah, there was four of them yeah, out there. Yeah, four. So. Just sitting there with the lights on. If you wonder how this company managed to lose $62 million in a year, <laughs> oh, geez. that's five grand right there for four fucking ambulances. Easy. Tank Abbott uh, takes over DJ Rand's... Come, come, commandeers. That's not the word I'm looking for. Commandeers DJ Rand's DJ booth. <laughs> he introduces three count. I loved about this. Everything. He runs off... DJ Rand, because he wants DJ Rand to play the three-count music. Right. But three-count hadn't even done their entrance yet. Yeah, correct. He was probably about to do it. He may have been. Tank mm-hmm. can't wait. No. no. And I gotta, I gotta give it to him. Tank was a pretty fucking good DJ. <laughs> he introduced him. He hit their music. They he came out. very bombastic. Clapped along. Yeah. We had the same match we had last week. Young Dragons yeah. and three-count. I believe they just wrestle every week for no reason from this point on. So it starts off with a crazy brawl, total mess, camera has no idea what to show. Somehow Shane gets hurt, so he leaves and Tank takes his place. He got dumped over the top rope and made a bad landing. If you say so. Okay. Uh, this, by the way, is the go-home show for Bash at the Beach. Yes, oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, a lot of action, and then Tank just punches out Yang and Shannon pins him. See, here's one of those things. They had UFC star Tank Abbott. Yeah. This guy was a big fucking name in UFC. Sure. Mm-hmm. Any competent wrestling promotion in the world could have made a shit ton of money with Tank Abbott. Absolutely. This is not a competent promotion. <laughs> no, it's not. It's filled with dumb shits. And so, this is one of those things. I would have gotten mad if this were on Raw. But, like, on this show, since they couldn't figure out how to make any money with Tank Abbott... He fucking may as well entertain me dancing with three counts. Amen. Okay. okay. That doesn't mean that that was the best idea to do with Tank Abbott. Sure. Of course not. Okay. The best idea to do with Tank Abbott is have him feud with Sid. Well, I had him feud with Goldberg, but they couldn't even do well, that right. That, that too. Yeah, they, they ruined that in one match. Yeah. So Tank orders Shannon and Evan to sing again, and Shane returns with one arm, and they all dance, and Tank dances much better than any of them. He actually does. <clears throat> Kevin Nash arrives. A geek lets him know there's a video package coming up. He's going to like it. It's up next. Cat meets the Young Dragons. Has a proposition for them. Goldberg arrives. Here's what I wrote for the next segment in its entirety. What the fuck? Sure. Awesome power bomb some guy through a table. Wait, where are you? Yeah. No, you, he's in the right spot. It can be hard to tell. Have we got a Goldberg promo yet? No. Okay. Yeah. All right. Why do pet peeve of mine? When you're gonna power some power bomb somebody through a table, why do they leave a bunch of stuff on the table except for in the middle? It was fake. 
It, it's all fake stuff? It you was a giant fake monitor. You didn't notice the giant fake monitor that was, was on two of these tables? Yes, it was the same fake monitor they used twice. Yes. It was like a hollow plastic... It's probably like an empty milk like, jug. Like a generic okay. Win 95 screenshot. Yes. yes. In that case, I rescind everything I said. Yes. Yeah. That made me laugh, actually. <laughs> it was ridiculous. It was a giant cathode ray tube monitor that, like, had a screen that never changed. Even yeah. when it flew up in the air and fell back down. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the screen was indestructible. Okay. They did an outsider's video package. When your company is in the shits, do not show a highlight reel of when it used to be awesome. Yes. What are they going to show? Do, it, it, anything sucks. else? They don't got jack shit to show. <laughs> they either show when it was awesome or they show when it sucked. <laughs> there, it's a lose All I know is I'm watching the peak NWO stuff from 95 and 96 when his company was on fire. Oh my god, it makes you it makes it so crystal clear I how know. terrible it is now. I know. You're not wrong, Vinny, but it's like we either show ninety five or we show two thousand. There's no right answer. <laughs> no They're winning. both wrong answers. There is no winning. Goldberg goes into the truck, tells them to turn it off. Boy, would I have turned that shit off? <laughs> they took too long. That guy came in and told me to turn this shit off. It'd be off before he finished talking. Nash is upset that Bill cut the video package off. Of course he is. It's about him. It is. We get a Goldberg promo on the Outsiders. But Goldberg, as he healed, does nothing but tell the truth. Goldberg comes out and he says, These are two of the biggest pieces of garbage in this business. Time for someone to step up and tell you what the story is. They try to undermine and destroy WCW. Huh. Scott Hudson goes, What? <laughs> I was like, Scott, you're on the Observer Hotline, for fuck's sake. I mean, in real life, in storyline, they came in to destroy this fucking company. There was an invasion. That was a storyline for three fucking years. And then he says, I carried this fucking company on my back for two years. I've given the people someone to believe in. I gave them a hero. And what do they do? Turn me here. They spat on me. Oh, yeah. And I was like, this is so... WWE 2019. Actually, 2018 with Becky Lynch. Like, everything he said was true until he talked about the fans turning on him. Yeah. No fan ever turned on Goldberg. No, they always cheered him. They loved him. It's ridiculous. He's going to put Nash through pain and torture in six days, and the blood is in the fans' hands. So Nash comes out to fight, but geeks hold him back. Cat runs out, orders them to break it up, and also orders them to go to commercial. We go to the break. We come back during the break. I love this. The locker room emptied. Awesome power bomb. Some other guy. And an ambulance took him away. I should add that Goldberg in his promo said, You saw what I did at Hacksaw last week. Imagine when I put Nash through at the pay-per-view. So, Nash comes out. Did we mention when Nash came out and challenged Goldberg? We talked about him coming out. Nash comes out and he says, I got four words for you. <laughs> First two... It's my time. Hold on, let me count. Two, three. I'm so happy I was zoning out during this. I was like, I can only wait for the second two. Sure. The second two going to be, suck it, Goldberg? No. (laughs) The second two actually were, why wait? So, he only fucked up the first two words. Half of the four words. Which were three words. And geeks ran down to separate them and... Awesome powerbomb, some guy. And another another name that took him away. Security guard, I guess. I don't know. Mike attacked Goldberg in the melee, I think. Who cares? The cat is on the phone again. He does not want to give the rednecks anything for free. He wants them to pay for it. He will try to keep them safe. Eric is yelling at him to keep these men apart. See, I needed you here to translate what Eric was saying. Because I was well, I don't know. I could just tell by how Cat was responding. Hmm. Terry Funk tells Johnny the Bull he has a real tough opponent tonight, and then he hits Johnny the Bull and they have a match. Well, let's let's get the details again. Funk says grab that trash can. And Johnny the Bull goes to grab it, and Funk waffles him. Never turn your back on your opponent! And he starts beating the shit out of him. So they fucking fight forever. But this 20 minutes. They're hitting each other in the head with chairs. Funk is bleeding from the fucking cheek. <laughs> what do you do to bleed from the cheek? Something got fucked up somewhere. Mm-hmm. So Shaving. this is, in fact, the famous match where Johnny the Bull broke his ass. He ripped his... He, he tore, his, tore his, urethra. his urethra. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'd rather break my ass, frankly. Sure. I remember the landing vividly, okay? <laughs> right. But what I actually had forgotten was Johnny the Bull slams Funk on the floor. He puts a chair on his head, goes into the ring, and his, his plan <laughs> is I'm going to run. I'm going to spring onto the top rope. 
I'm going to springboard into a leg drop on the pretty black mats on the floor. Yeah. Okay. So apparently I've been practicing a, a, the move in the afternoon onto a crash pad. But, like, everyone thought he wasn't actually going to do it without a crash pad. They thought he was working on it for, like, you know, whatever, something else. Maybe come off the top. No, this fucking guy runs. <laughs> and he's going to jump onto the top rope and springboard into an ass drop, basically, mm-hmm. onto Terry Funk on the floor. And okay. the chair. Now, what happened in real life was he ran and he jumped and he lost his balance. Yes. Yeah. And he fell back into the ring. Yes, the earth was trying to save his No, urethra. this was God, Craig. God was sending him a sign. God was sending him a message. Johnny, what are you fucking thinking? That's what God says. But you know what okay. Johnny said? In this case, he would. He said, you know what I'm thinking, God? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this fucking move. Okay. God damn it. Nah. And he ran, and he did the move, and his urethra separated from his urethra. However this works. I've never looked closely at my own urethra. But something very, very bad happened. He's held it a lot, but he hasn't looked at it. And he goes down, and now he can't get up. <laughs> and I don't want to see anybody hurt. I don't even want to make light of we, the situation. We just did see somebody hurt. I don't want to laugh about it. But fuck, what in the fuck were you fucking thinking? Yes. You know what I'm saying? There was no way to do this and not tear something. <laughs> But you know Probably what? something a little less vital. There are so many guys that do shit just as dumb, and they don't tear their urethra. Sure. Okay? Maybe take That doesn't mean you, that you should do it. So now he's got a torn urethra. <laughs> and the and whatever happens over. when you tear your urethra is happening. It ain't good. <laughs> I can tell it hurts. And sure. he can't get up, and Funk's like, we're going to keep going. Oh, my God. And they keep For like wrestling. three more minutes. Yes. Can... And Funk is calling spots. Slam me, brother. Funk small packages himself. But yes. then he well, kicks they, out. He, he called like a, a suplex or a slam or something, and Johnny goes, oh, fuck, I can't lift you. And so Funk puts himself into a small package somehow. It's awful. It keeps going. And finally, Johnny is able to DDT him on a chair, where basically they both just fall down. I don't want to laugh about this, but like, do you remember when Owen Hart, Tombstone, Steve Austin, and fucked up his neck? Yes. Okay. Sounds familiar. So sure. so Owen Hart had to find a way to pin himself. And he did. He cradled himself. Yes. Okay. Terry Funk cradled himself and then kicked out. Yes. I'm like, what an asshole. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And then finally they do the DDT, and Johnny's all fucked up, and that was it. <laughs> that was it. That was it, for sure. He can oh. barely walk, and he's trying to do spots. Oh, my gosh. And then later, there's a segment backstage where the Shat's trying to get all these guys ready for a battle royal. Yeah. Yes. And Johnny the Bull's sitting there totally fine. Yes. If there ever was a pre-tape, that oh, was yeah. a pre-tape. He didn't even have an ice pack or nothing. No. Ice pack. <laughs> he needed a cork. I don't know. It's just... <laughs> Crazy blue. <laughs> cork. We are told that earlier in the day... Dale Torborg and Asia <laughs> were rehearsing a brand new entrance. Mm-hmm. She is dancing sure. to this kiss music, and a fucking bomb goes she off. She explodes. <laughs> what? When Pyro went off and blew Asia up. The whole Asia. Asia. That's just a, lot, that's a lot of Pyro. It's gone. She is being kept at a hospital for observation. <laughs> that's that's good. <laughs> for after exploding. I'm observing that you appear to have been blown up <laughs> by Pyro. We don't know why. <laughs> I don't so, know why, but I see a picture I can't of take much and more Sam, of this. and he's all black. I'm losing it. Hair singed. I'm making cork jokes. Like, I, this is off the rails. It's bad. <laughs> Dale returns to the building. Dale comes back, and there's the emperor. Okay, well, <laughs> he says, he tells somebody, I'm going to grab my stuff and go back to the hospital where my wife is being observed after she blew up. The lights start to flash. There's a, they call him the Emperor. Call him a whatever. But he's there to give Dale the demon gear that Dale does not want, but Dale takes. Yes. And he leaves. It's not even the 24-7 title. This gear that he doesn't want is more important than his wife. 
And then we find out that the emperor is Vampiro. Yes. Yes. Remember, Vampiro was talking to the emperor the other day. He was talking to himself. Apparently, we have, we have Maybe seen. He was looking in a mirror. We have seen the, the emperor. We have seen the emperor attack Vampiro backstage. We have seen the emperor in the rafters pointing at Vampiro. Right. Now the Vampiro is the emperor. But, but there's another one. When he turns and the emperor pulls off his stingmaster reveal, Vampiro. There's, I, I wrote another Jedi, but whatever. Sure. There's another Jedi behind him. There are no Jedis in WCW if, if, in the year 2000. If this isn't Gene Simmons under a hood by the end of this, I'm going to be very upset. Well, get upset now, dude. This company is dumb enough to pay Gene Simmons what Gene Simmons <laughs> would request and then mask him. Sure. <laughs> so no yeah, they, yeah him. they'd hire Gene Simmons. And then hide He'd him. be under the thing. <laughs> yes. But then they'd swerve you and he'd unmask him to be Russo. So he never actually saw Gene Simmons. <laughs> that is what they would do. That's entirely, <laughs> that's totally plausible. They had fucking, <laughs> the godfather of fucking soul show up unannounced, unannounced. on a pay-per-view. Yes. That was dumb. The cat tells Goldberg Nash has bailed, so he's off tonight. Goldberg does not fall for this. He demands a match tonight against Nash and tells Cat he's going to be in trouble if he doesn't get it. Mark Jindrak and Sean O'Hare versus General Rection and Corporal Cajun. They put Jindrak and O'Hare in new outfits to make them look like giant Hardy Boys. Boy, that's horrible. Jindrak and O'Hare are green. Primary color baggy pants. And it's just move, 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 move. Yeah. They should be learning how to structure a match because they got they got hope. They do. At this point. There's yeah, clear yeah. talent here. So they go in there, they do a ton of moves, and huge erection pins Jindrak. That happened. Are you fucking kidding me? My favorite- I mean, I know you're not. <laughs> this company died. My favorite part is, we, as we mentioned, O'Hare and Jindrak at this point are very talented but very green. And so Jindrak is going to do the electric chair drop. He gets Rection up on his shoulders and just drops him backwards on his back. But it all goes wrong. He doesn't. He's supposed to go in the middle of the ring, but he's basically still in the corner. He lands on his neck. Could have been hurt very badly. But now the next spot is he's supposed to land, and Sean O'Hare is going to hit a big splash. Now O'Hare goes to the top rope anyway. doesn't matter where this guy ended up. He's going to do a splash. And he gets up top, and he looks way over yonder at the distance where General Rection is lying prone. Mm-hmm. And he loses his balance, and he teeters and totters, and he says, fuck it. And he launches himself all the way across the ring like goddamn Superman. And he hit the splash all the way across the ring. It was like the, the, the best the best looking fuck-up you ever saw. And then they pinned him. By and the way... The MIA cleared the ring, and they all lay down and play dead, so major guns will come by and give them mouth-to-mouth one by one. Yeah. Creepy. So... <laughs> Well, we she put, was dumb enough to fall for it. We missed the part where the announcers casually mentioned that Johnny the Bull is passing blood backstage. <sighs> That's what happens when you tear your urethra, everyone. Blood gets where it's not supposed to go. <sighs> uh, we are also... <laughs> uh, Hudson referred to General Erection as Hugh Morris and clearly was chastised very badly. Oh. apologized. And then, yes, Palumbo and Stasiak come out and attack everybody. Then everybody kills them, and they all lay down for major guns. You ever look up Major Gun's Wikipedia page? I'll do it right now. You look over on the right as, as uh, her. Uh, just read the, her, her occupation, occupational history. Like the third or fourth entry. Tyler Buck, an American pornographic actress. Mm. Tylene Buck, by the way. Model, cam girl. What did I say? Tyler. Oh. That's her stage name. Former pro wrestler and valet. She is perhaps best known. For her stint in WCW under the ring name Major Guns. I just love over on the right hand side here. Occupation. Bikini. Bikini modeling. Fitness modeling. Fitness modeling. Pornography. Pornography. <laughs> cam girl. Trade show spokesmodel. Pro wrestler and promotional model. Yes. That just made me laugh. Uh, okay, that's all that segment. The cat tells Nash Goldberg left and he should take the night off. Now this just occurred to me. Goldberg threatened Cat and basically said, if I don't get a match with Kevin Ashton, I'm going to kill you. Wait, she's still a cam girl? As far as I know. Buck is also a cam girl on the site myfreecams.com. Careful, Brian. I'm not going on there. Okay. Oh, plug. Just, this was 19 years ago. Plug her business. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Cat tries the same thing with Nash. Goldberg left, you have the night off, and Nash says, no, you're going to make the match happen. Match happen. Awesome. Awesome. Pa- you're thinking about myfreecams.com? <laughs> I'm just bad at radio, Brian. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mike Awesome is powerbombing some other random guy. Mm-hmm. That's three. There was four. Am I supposed to care? No. It must be. Well, why, yes. Why would you? No, no, you are supposed to care. There's a plague of powerbombs going on to and some And by the way, people. I had to listen three times to figure out what Nash said to Shat. 
because he decided to whisper with no fucking microphone. Which, by the way, have you ever noticed in WWE where one of the interview women, like Charlie, will interview the club, and she'll hold the mic up to them and they'll talk, and then they'll tell her to get out of here so she gets out of there with the mic. Right. But you can still hear them. Sure. It's like it's a fake mic. Wow. It's a worked mic. Mine was blown right there. The cat tells Eric he is being threatened. He gets an idea, says he will call Eric back. I must speak of this next segment Have for just it. a couple of minutes. We could talk about this for days. First off, every goddamn fucking time Jeff Jarrett comes out, I can't believe he's the world champion. And it's not like I don't remember. I remember Jeff Jarrett as a champion, yeah. but even remembering it when I see him as the champion, I'm like, Jeff Jarrett is the champion? Of the world. Of the world. Before you go any farther, since you brought it up, I just want everyone to keep in mind, everything we're about to talk about in this segment is designed, designed to promote a world heavyweight yes. championship nice. match in six days. Yes. This is the go-home segment for the world title match at the pay-per-view. Brian, the floor is yours. He comes out, and he's going to be facing Hulk Hogan at this infamous Bash of the Beach. <laughs> sure is. He says, Hulk Hogan is the man. I grew up watching him, emulating him, taking all the vitamins I could take. Hmm, I don't recommend call, that. Is that what they call him? And now I'm here, and on Sunday I will put the great Hulk Hogan out to pasture. Hulk Hogan may be the man, but I am a god. I have got some people I would like to introduce to you here tonight. Oh, boy. He calls out, and this is, I mean, listen. They're fat ladies. That's the joke. Mm -hmm. The fat lady is going to sing. Yeah. Three he of calls them. out three fat ladies dressed as Vikings. We could do 20 minutes on there trying to get in the ring alone. But they don't get into the ring. They Or they don't sing first. They get into the ring. And Jeff Jarrett decides... Whoa, 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 no, whoa, whoa, up, whoa, whoa. I'm going to do a Q&A. Whoa, whoa. It took them longer, Brian, to come down the aisle, climb up on the apron, and step to the ropes. This took more time than Jarrett's promo before or afterwards. They were tripping over their horns. Yes. Did they the rehearse sword? this one time... I'm beforehand. still not sure if they rehearsed this 50 times they could successfully get into the ring. This is just... Now listen, my point is... the If Jared was going to say, I am going to put Hulk Hogan out to pasture, and I'm going to bring out the fat lady she's going to sing, and the fat lady comes out and sings, like, it's one of the worst segments I've ever seen. Yes. But, like, they didn't even do that. They brought out the fat ladies for a fucking Q and A. Jeff Jarrett's going to ask these fat women questions. That happened. Here on national television. That happened. Who is the greatest champion? Oh, you, Jeff Jarrett. I don't even remember the questions. It doesn't matter. This was so far beyond death TV. This is the world champion setting up a match with Hulk Hogan in six days of the pay-per-view. So they're out there, they finally start fucking singing. And out comes some fella named Galen. Which was his real name, by the way. Galen comes out, and he decides, I am going to take this mic away from Jeff Jarrett. The standards and practices do not want to see fat women being called fat and singing in Viking outfits in the ring. I see. I don't blame them. The world champion... Starts backpedaling and fleeing Galen. Yes. <laughs> Factual description. Galen is chase. Galen is a 60-year-old bald fucking guy in a suit. <laughs> Who we've never seen before. Chasing Jeff Jarrett. Who the Jarrett fuck is Galen? Around the ring. Jeff Jarrett is fleeing Galen around fat women in Viking costumes. I, I can't even make this up. Finally, he smashes a guitar over Galen's head. How is this not, like, <laughs> number four or five in Russell Crapp's worst moments in the history of World Championship Wrestling? Why does nobody remember this? <laughs> That's a great question. Is it because it everything was so bad? Unspeakably awful, this was. This was bad beyond bad. Like, beyond the bad that we see on this fucking show every week, this was so far beyond that, nobody even remembers it. We talk all the time about something so embarrassing, you hope no one watches you. Yes. No one watched me watching this. I'm still humiliated to have seen it. It's bad when you're embarrassed. If your wife would have walked in 
The end. I'd be moving in here. You you would be moving in. I'm washing the sheets. Yeah, in anticipation that she'll yes. wash it someday. It's bad when you feel embarrassed for somebody. I was embarrassed for myself. I was embarrassed for myself, man. Okay. How did I let it come to this, that I'm watching this? <laughs> See, I, I do not have enough thumbs in the world to give down No, this. and this is not one of those things where it's like, go back and watch this. It's so bad, it's no, good. No, do not watch this, everyone. It's so bad. It's hot garbage. You'll quit watching wrestling. You'll quit this show. My daughter won't go to college. <laughs> Don't fucking watch this. It's shit. I'll tell you funny shit to watch on Nitro. This ain't it. No. So the cat comes out. He books a battle royal for the main event. Oh, says classic. If Goldberg and Nash can get through eighteen guys, they can do whatever they want to each other. They can fuck. They, <laughs> That's what he said. That's they, what he said. They can make whoopee for all I care. I really hope it does not come down to Goldberg and Nash at this point. Now, that would be a pay per view. So by the way, Nash wants Goldberg. Goldberg wants Nash. They're demanding the opportunity to get in the ring together. Shat's trying to sign a battle royal to keep them apart. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just checking. Franchise goes for a walk. Booker T goes for a walk. And ambulance leaves. I'm not even sure why at this point. I'm taking the guy away. They got powerbombs through the fucking Which table. one? Number well, three. they had four of them. Yeah, that's number I thought three. we made that clear. Have there been four powerbombs? I've there lost been track. Three. Only, only three so far. Yes. Yes, sir. Maybe one left with Johnny the Bull. That's possible. Or Asia. Asia. Asia left in one. I don't know. They didn't just sweep her up. And okay. So, Jarrett did his wacky thing with the women. He got shut down by standards and practices, but he hit the guy with the guitar, so his day is done. Why are Jeff Jarrett and the cat yelling at each I other? I have no idea. What the fuck? Why, why are they mad? What's who, happening? Who is the baby face? I don't know. I was so mad when I saw that. <laughs> What's going on? Why are they fighting? What is happening? This is a Bischoff show, by the way. Oh. And he's taking over SmackDown in two weeks. <laughs> How ironic. My notes here read, on Thunder, there was some kind of Bagwell Canyon Booker fight, and now it's Bagwell Douglas at the pay-per-view. Like, I'm watching this show, and half the time, it's like, were, were major chunks of this edited out? Did, 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 were no. there technical difficulties that wiped out big no. portions of the show? Major chunks, a failed gimmick for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the worst member of MIA. <laughs> that could have been draws off. Finally, you, you paid for your... <laughs> <laughs> so it's Shane Douglas versus Booker T., I'm well, so over this show. Well, I don't know what happened, and I don't care. It may have even been good, but no, I don't give a shit. It was not. Canyon's out there interfering the whole time. He bonks into Shane. It's not the finish. Booker goes to the bookend. They fuck it up to a royal degree. It's the finish anyway, and Booker wins. Is this the first time he used the bookend? They, I don't they know. Don't, they haven't named it or anything. I honestly thought the show was almost over, and I scrolled down. And well, now, you're halfway there, man. I'm dying, dude. I, I can't do this. Dale, I have to just leave. Dale Torborg, who did not want to be the demon, who left because his wife got blown up, <laughs> has put the costume and makeup on, and he's just sitting there. We're supposed to care about this. He's just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> the cat goes into the heel locker room, says, I need your help. It's your job to keep Goldberg and Nash apart in this battle royal. He promises them all bonuses if they do a good job, and they accept. Yeah, you'll you'll be rewarded for it if you do a good job. So if they are if they are able to keep... Nash and Goldberg from fucking. They will get some sort of reward. Well. That's, that's, guys, that's what they told us on the show. <laughs> I'm not making this up. The cat did say they could make whoopee. Yes. Their I mean, job is to keep them from fucking each other on national television in the middle of the ring. You get a spray bottle and a paper rolled up. Newspaper. I hate this show. <sighs> then we got the Vampiro versus Oh, Man. God. This fucking Vampiro Demon feud. Everyone talks about the Vampiro Sting feud, how terrible it was. Listen, <laughs> Vampiro Demon's worse. Dude, they've done such a wretched job getting Dale Torborg over that he gets in there and all people do is chant for Sting. Yes. They don't give a shit about Vamp. They don't give two shits about Dale Torborg. Mm. They only care about Sting. So, so a bunch of this storyline has gotten Sting over. <laughs> he was already over. Yes, yeah. it was. So a bunch of Sting Jedi has come out. Vampiro is distracted. The demon wins with the love gun. Speaking of making whoopee. The stings surround Vampiro. The lights go out. The Vampiro disappears. The stings all look at each other. And they shuffle away. Wretched. What? I the don't fuck know. fuck is this? It's horrible. It's fucking horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> I just don't understand. 
And these assholes blame the AOL Time Warner merger. <laughs> Fuck you. Smooth has a plan. Okay, I forgot about this. Smooth tells the filthy animals, I have a plan. I don't know what they were upset about or what his plan accomplished, but they have a plan. Oh, then we go back to another meeting, okay? This is the pre-tape. So all the geeks are backstage, and Kidman, I guess, is a baby face now. I still don't know how, who, what, why, when, where, whatever. Mm-hmm. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. All of those? I don't know, okay? But he's there. So I guess he's supposed to be cool because he's, like, tying his boots, and he's not paying attention. He's the cool kid in class, and Shat starts talking, and Kidman goes, overrated. It's like, well, excuse me, who's overrated? Shat? Who's rating him? No shit he's fucking overrated. Who, who, who rate? Well. What is he talking about? Was this before or after Cat called Kidman a virgin? I think it was, I think that was his comeback. I see. So Johnny the Bulls is sitting there. Shat called him a virgin, and so he said Shat was overrated. That was his comeback? What does that even mean? Yeah, Kidman should never have spoken. I'm pretty sure every single time he opened his mouth, he came off worse for it. Ever. There's, like, one comeback to being called a virgin. Tori! I fuck Tori. And he comes up with overrated? Having sex, or... Ah, fuck it, who cares? Johnny the Bull sitting there hanging out, urethra totally fine. Shad says, if you guys don't keep Goldberg and Nash from fucking, you're all fired. Mm. And Book says, we all want to get our hands on Goldberg. Which now has a totally different tone after this conversation. David is backstage with Daphne. God right? damn okay. it. All right. The monitor that we do the show on is over here, right? Yeah. So David is sitting right where I am with a monitor, right? Looking at it. And he keeps looking like this at the monitor. And the monitor shows Miss Hancock going to the ring in a skimpy wedding gown. Mm-hmm. So David was talking to Daphne, looking over here like this, and talking to Daphne, and looking over here like this. And Daphne, who's sitting right here, goes, What are you looking at? What are you looking at? And never looks over here, even though it's right in front of her face. For like two minutes, this goes on. That's the key. Okay, that's the key. The whole joke is, he is trying to apologize to Daphne, but he is distracted by Miss Hancock on the TV. Right. We get the joke. (laughs) They fucking went on for two minutes, circuitously, over and over. I'm sorry, baby. Oh, hot girl. What? Oh, I'm sorry, baby. Oh, fucking hot girl. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. Oh, hot girl. Two fucking minutes! This may have been the first animated gif. Just looped over and over again. So anyway, Miss Hancock's in the ring. She begins to dance. Crowbar comes out with a chair. Where's he been? Who cares? Okay. David is kissing Daphne, and he sees Crowbar with a chair. He begins to retch and tell Daphne he is sick. Go get some Pepto-Bismol. She runs left. He runs right. Crowbar is now menacing Miss Hancock. He hates her for some reason. I don't know why. Crowbar has clippers up to her head. He's going to shave her bald. Calls out David. David runs out, he stands in the middle of the ring, and he does this. This is great radio, I know. Over and over again. He just stands there. Daphne comes up. Trying to chi blast. I guess. Daphne comes up. I think she was supposed to nutshot him. Yes. She fondled him. Well. She just very gently stroked him. It worked. He was distracted. She poured Pepto-Bismol on his head. Now Miss Hancock, Miss Hancock and Daphne are brawling. Why am I watching this? It's awful. It's awful. So now Canyon's still mad at Miss Hancock. Canyon? Who the fuck's Canyon? Crowbar. Crowbar. I got my long black hair guy confused. Crowbar is still mad at Miss Hancock. So her response is, I'll offer this guy a blowjob. And she drops to her knees and begins to fondle his hips. And Crowbar's response is, free blowjob. And he stands there. And he's going to take it, except David ruins his blowjob, lays him out from behind with a chair. So then, now, 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 fucking Crowbar, God! Now Crowbar and Hancock are friends. They work together to shave Daphne's hair. I wasn't even aware when I watched this, like, how awful and stupid and nonsensical this is. Why Vinny, are Crowbar... Vinny, it's way worse than your... Than your you, you're, you're so far beyond... Listen... Crowbar's mad at David. Okay, right. so I don't know why, but okay. he's using David's yes. side piece, sure, to get to Daphne. Okay, Daphne as bad as what I say. He said Daphne. Who, who gives? I'm just trying to figure out why you're watching about Daphne okay. now. Okay, so as bad as this is, okay, what you are missing is, and I, I'm not even making this up, everybody. Crowbar. I didn't have it wrong. 
<laughs> and Miss Hancock are going to shave Daphne's head. Right. But they're not really going to shave her head. No, they're not. So David gets a fake shaver, and I swear to God, he starts reaching into his pants, Hmm. because what he's doing is he's pulling out fake hair. Are we on camera? Which he then puts on Daphne's head to fake pull out. Got it. They're pretending... (laughs) I was trying to figure out. ...to shave her head. Everybody in the crowd knows they're not really cutting her hair, and they are absolutely dead quiet. This... What is going on? What's going on? So David, who by the way is covered in pink Pepto-Bismol this whole time. Yes. David and Hancock leave, but before they do, they put the clippers and the hair in Crowbar's hand. And Daphne thinks Crowbar did it because she's the dumbest person in the world. And after all that, the announcers then say, we got videotape evidence that he didn't do it. They totally blew it off. Well, that's you know what? This was not as bad as whatever that last segment I flipped my lid on, the Jeff Jarrett and the fat ladies. Mm-hmm. This was not as bad as that, but it was 98% of the way there. This was horrendous, horrible, awful, wretched, useless television. During the break, Crowbar tries to plead his case, but Mike Awesome kills him. And power bombs them through a table with the same fake monitor on it. They kept moving this fake monitor around. That's four. Then Crowbar tears off his neck brace, but Austin throws it into an ambulance anyway, and it goes away. Cat says, I'm going to run out of ambulances. Then Tigress comes in. Now, remember when Smooth said he had a plan for the filthy animals? Right. Okay. Tigress comes in and starts flirting with the cat. The cat... Now, I know we kind of made jokes <laughs> about Goldberg and Nash fucking. Right. They were not really going to fuck, and we all knew it. Thanks, That's... thanks, Vinny. The cat pushes his chair back and gestures under his desk mm-hmm. and invites Tigress to sit under his desk, and you can all guess what would happen next. But she says, no, I want to go to my room. And Cat says, okay, I have two minutes. And they leave. So what was the point of this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like... What? The cat and the tigers got together to make Why do we have to get Shad out of the picture for two minutes? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Brian, I don't know. So Disco and Conan come out. They introduce Kidman and Lance, but it's Ray and Hoovy in disguise. Ray, by the way, looks awesome in Lance's gear. Should have worn this full time. Kidman and Lance attack. We get Lance and Kidman versus Ray Mysterio and Hooventud Guerrero. Dude, they haven't told us jack shit about Lance since he debuted. No. He debuted, they acted like it was a real big deal and exciting, but now it's three weeks in, Mm -hmm. he's randomly doing matches, we don't know anything about him, the only thing we know is he's a babyface, that's literally all we know, and during the matches, the announcers just talk about other shit. Yeah. And by the way, Lance brought this up to me, this is the first time Ray came out in Lance's gear before Lance ever came out in gear. Yes, that is true. (laughs) It, Lance was not wearing the brown sweatpants this week. No. That was an improvement. Ray should have come out in the brown sweatpants, and Lance came out in gear and went, Ha ha! <laughs> you look like an idiot! <laughs> so they did 10,000 moves, Disco threw a chair in the ring, and Ray dropped Kidman on the chair and won. Lance just debuted, mm-hmm. Kidman just turned babyface, mm-hmm. and they've beaten them. Well, losing, losing to the filthy animals. Yeah. The cat returns to his office. He is tucking his shirt back into his trousers because he was nude, you see. He had his genitals out. He says, I hope I didn't miss anything good. The storyline is, Tigress actually seduced and serviced the cat for reasons I cannot explain. I don't know what she got out of this. I don't know what the filthy animals got out of this. I don't know what the point of any of this was. (laughs) And by the way, Ray Mysterio was totally fine with this. That's also true. Ray pimped out his girlfriend. That is so low on the list of things to complain about this show. Fair. Pamela Paul Shock interviews Vampiro. She Vampiro sucks. Vampiro, the lights went out and he vanished, right? Mm-hmm. He's gone. He had to flee the army of Jedi stings. Sure. Now he's just back here. He's hanging out with Pamela doing an interview. Dude, she is so bad. She's terrible. Like, it's all about getting herself over. <laughs> yes. It's like the exact, like, WWE. Ah, fuck it, who cares? You know how she can get over? Anymore. You know how she can get over? Stand there. She looks great. Vampiro promises he's going to finish Torborg in a graveyard match at Bash of the Beach. Oh, I can't wait. Another one of these. 
Nash is with Pamela. He tells Goldberg, I'll be the big pissed off guy, real easy to find. And he leaves, and of course, Pamela just swoons over him. A Mike Awesome promo. Yeah, I got the ECW champion, and we're going to give him a mullet gimmick and have him do comedy and make gonna, sure we're, we're, that he does not get over. We're going to have him grow out the mullet, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not even a mullet anymore. Then we'll have him kill everyone. Then do the mullet. The, the, the gimmick is that he has a bad haircut. I am not a mullet, he says. You're the mullet. Indicating he doesn't even really know what a mullet is. He just had hair. Right. <sighs> he demands... The referee count Scott Steiner out of the ring. He challenged him to a match, but Scott Steiner's not there, so he wants a count out. Ref counts him out, and Rick Steiner hits the ring, and he kills Mike Awesome. And I was like, how in the fuck is this supposed to make me care about Scott Steiner versus Mike Awesome? No idea. Rick came out and beat up Awesome. And I'm supposed to give you twenty nine ninety five <laughs> to see Scott Steiner and fucking Mike Awesome have a match together? Fuck you. Why is this show so shitty? <laughs> I don't have an answer to that. When uh, Rick and Awesome were brawling in the middle of the ring, you could really tell that uh, stepping on top of that big, huge logo, awful slippery. Yeah. The cat, first he orders all the heels to the ring. And then Nash goes out, and somehow he's in the ring alone. And Cat tells the baby faces to wait for his order. So the idea is... We'll get Nash alone and have all the heels kill him. Except, like a martial arts movie, they all hit him one at a time. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be a battle royal. They're coming down one at a time. Tony Schiavone goes, well, this is not a battle royal. Thanks, Tony. And then they're explaining, well, it's a gauntlet match. But then Nash is eliminating people by throwing them over the top rope. Mm -hmm. Where is Goldberg? Don't know. Nash wanted Goldberg. Mm -hmm. Goldberg wanted Nash. We were told that Goldberg wanted Nash. Nash is alone in the ring. Where the fuck is Goldberg? All of these geeks come out. Finally, they just throw down Chet, and they all storm the ring to beat up Nash. They're all beating each other well, make up, Making a save on for Nash, actually. They, they all start beating each other up. Yeah. The baby faces were trying to save Nash. <laughs> oh, is that what they were doing? Yeah. I see. Goldberg comes down. <sighs> fuck, who cares? He kicks Nash in the head. When he goes with the spear, guys grab him. He steps through the ropes. And Nash knocks him off the apron, and Goldberg is out, and Kevin Nash wins the Battle Royal. This is so bad. Kevin Nash has beaten Goldberg again. Granted, it's a bullshit Battle Royal win, but still, I mean, I laughed. <laughs> and then, everybody holds him apart after the whole idea was to... Whatever. And Mark Mann screams, and I quote, They fight for real on Sunday. <laughs> Not this fake bullshit. They're going to fight for real at the pay-per-view. I hate this show. It was awful. Mm -hmm. I hate it passionately. It's one of the worst Nitros I've ever seen in my entire life. I feel like it's a weekly thing right now. It's just wretched. You ready? Sure. The finishes on this show were... Clean pin, which seems impossible to believe. That's what I wrote down here. Definitive pin in a hardcore match. Pin after botched interference. Pin after distraction. Pin after interference with the weapon. Count out when one man fails to show. And he win in a battle royal where a guy goes through the ropes. Horrible. It's not good. We're at 10 months to go. Nine, <sighs> 10 months to go. I can't do it. March, April, May, June, July. <laughs> Wait. April, May, June, July. It's July now. It's Eight July. months. Oh, I see. Eight months. It's better than 10. Yeah. It is. I can't wait till it's over. I'm going to retire. <laughs> I'm done with radio. I'm finished. We are at war. All right. Nitro. WCW Monday Nitro number 251, also July 10th of the year 2000. All right, my friends. This is the night after the famous bash at the beach pay-per-view in the year 2000. The announcer said there was a lot they could not talk about, and the only way that you could relive it was to watch the replay. That was amazing. Okay. We legally cannot talk about this, but we can sell it to you. So this is what happened for those of you that don't remember. I will make this as quick as possible. The match was Hulk Hogan versus Jeff Jarrett for the championship. Hogan was challenging for Jarrett's title. Hogan comes out for the match. Jarrett comes out. And Russo comes out looking forlorn. Russo then tells Jarrett, 
just lay down. Jarrett lays down in the middle of the ring. Hogan puts his foot on Jarrett's chest and he pins him. You, the fans, are supposed to believe that Hogan demanded to win this match, his creative control clause, and so Russo fucked him by having Jarrett not do a match and just lay down for Hulk Hogan. So, Russo then comes out later, and in case you are actually that stupid to not understand what's going on, he explains it to you. He says that Hogan used his creative control card to call the shots, and Jarrett laid down for him. And here's the key, everybody. This was all a work. It was all a storyline. Until Russo did this promo, and he called Hulk Hogan a big, bald son of a bitch. As it turns out, Hogan got very upset about this. He legitimately felt that Vince Russo went too far in this promo, disparaged him, called him bald, made him look bad, and as a result, because of this work, Hogan quit, and he filed a legitimate real-life lawsuit against Vince Russo. And this was, in fact, the end of Hulk Hogan in World Championship Wrestling. So that's what happened. That's what happened leading to where we are now. Booker, later in the night, beat Jeff Jarrett to become the new champion. They tried to convince all of the wrestlers that this was a shoot, even though they had a second belt out there. What a fucking coincidence. And, of course, nobody believed it. And it was just another example of the company trying to work all the wrestlers and the wrestlers knowing what's going on and losing faith in management and the place careened out of control and went out of business. But that's the story of the Bash of the Beach 2000. Well, here's what we got on Nitro, the opening video. At Bash of the Beach, Booker T beat Jeff Jarrett for the world title. A match that, by the way, was not booked or advertised or even hinted at before, ever, at any point. They have clips of... Actually, it was a good video package, although it was very rushed. But it was Booker T going back to the early days of Harlem Heat and the early days as a single star. Mike Tanay is doing this voiceover of the life story growing up in Houston. A uh, very rough life if you don't know Booker T's life story. And then he says, as he rose to the ranks, Booker T did it, became very successful. It became apparent that it was a question of when, not if, he would be world champion. Wow. It did? <laughs> because... I've been watching this whole Nitro. I've seen every Nitro they've ever done. He's never sniffed the main event scene. Nope. The closest he has come to being a main eventer until this Nitro right here is when he slipped up and accidentally called Hulk Hogan a very bad name. That's true. So, yeah, he's world champion now. They're doing the crowd shots, and there's this gal showing a lot of cleavage. So, of course, they show her on camera. And then they cut to another camera... It's the same woman, just a different angle. <laughs> Funny how that works. <laughs> that made me laugh. Shivani tries to explain what happened last night. Says Vince Russo signed Booker T versus Jeff Jarrett. There are some fans holding up Hogan shirts. There are some fans chanting Hogan sucks. And Shivani says a lot went down last night that legally we cannot talk about. But you can buy the replay to see it all for yourself. <laughs> What a little horseshit that is. Booker T comes out for a promo. He's got the belt. He's got the shiny new shirt on. He's a star. Says he has no script. This is not a wrestling promo. He's just going to speak from the heart. His one regret is his mother is not there to see this. Thanks to the fans. Without the fans, there's no Booker T. All you playa haters in the back, don't hate the playa, hate the game. I think is the first time he said that. Calls out Goldberg for whining. Says Goldberg is a mark for himself and a mark for the business. Isn't that funny? Since Goldberg's a babyface at the end of the show. He asks security to bring his wife, Lavestia, into the ring. <laughs> she was not his wife for long. No. <laughs> but she was his wife here. He refers to her as Mrs. Huffman. 
thanks her for her love and for staying by him while he's on the road. Stevie Ray interrupts at this point. And if you've forgotten me, you had been feuding for like a year. Stevie says, I am the one who pushed you around on a tricycle. We slept in the same bed for 14 years. I loaned you my car. I loaned you my clothes. I brought you into this business. And I was there when Scott Casey said you had what it took and you'd be world champion. You're my brother. I'm proud of you. And I love you. And they had the big hug. That was so awesome. Then Medeja comes out. Now, Medeja never talked. She did totally fine here. Yeah. I think this was the first time I ever saw her cut an actual promo. Yeah, it she, wasn't she, a great promo by any means. That should have much to say, but I have seen 10,000 worse promos than this. I see the worst promos weekly. Usually by someone named McMahon. So Medeja says, there's only one man in WCW, only one champion. That's my big papa pump. And as she is distracting them, Scott Steiner comes through the crowd. He levels both members of Harlem Heat with a pipe. He menaces Lavestia. She has to be trapped in the corner, the old trapped in the corner gimmick. Yes. A classic. And eventually Steiner and Medeja leave. Now, wasn't Steiner a babyface last time we saw him? Uh, Yeah. He's so, randomly turned heel. He is a bad guy now with no explanation of when, why, or how this nope, happened. Nope, none. All right. After the break, Booker tells Stevie... But at least we're back on the same timeline again. But Scott Steiner should be a heel. Yes. Pretty much always, and definitely in WCW in the year 2000. Booker tells Stevie, take my wife and get out of here. Take care of her. I'm going to take care of business. Pamela now interviews Jeff Jarrett. Oh, my God. This fucking guy's character is just horrible on this show. It's like, he's just, a, he's just an angry guy. He's always angry about something. With everybody. And it's never like it's never like deep. There's never any layers to his anger. It's like he's a one-dimensional angry guy. He's angry that Booker's the champion. He wants his rematch. He's angry he's the, the chosen one. The cat threw him a curveball. He had no time to prepare. He wants his rematch. Pamela says Booker already has a match tonight. Before she can say anything else, Steiner lays Jarrett out. Yes. I thought, okay, Jeff Jarrett faced Booker and lost. He's here whining. Scott Steiner laid out Booker. They both hate Booker. Now they hate each other. So it is possible that, in fact, Scott Steiner is still a baby face. I guess. But he just wants this championship match. This doesn't explain him laying dudes out with a baseball bat, so I think no. he has turned heel. But, yes, this show sucks. I was often scratching my head throughout this program. Shane Douglas versus Crowbar. Speaking of, Shane is Tory now. Yes. Tory Wilson versus Shane Douglas. Do you remember like six months ago, we all sat down and were rattling off different things that we remembered about WCW before it died? And we're like, how fucking, how do all these things happen between now and March of 2001? It's like there's a million things. And the answer is because shit just happens every single week from now until the company goes out of business. Pretty much. And there's no rhyme or reason for any of it. There's random turns, there's random alliances, there's random matches, there's random characters, there's random storylines. They're just throwing fucking everything out every single week. This week, Shane Douglas is with Tori. He explains they have been together back since the days of the revolution. And my mind started spinning. I thought, is that when they kidnapped her? Yes. They've been dating since then? The, well, you see, Vinny, the plan, the the the... What did he say? The seeds were planted back then, and they waited until now to pull the trigger. So as if this isn't enough of a swerve, they show what happened to the Bash at the Beach when Douglas was wrestling Bagwell, and Tori comes out and begins her alliance with Shane Douglas by slapping Shane, then turning on Bagwell, because everything has to be a swerve and a double swerve. So Tori says, Kidman never pleased her, can't remember why, randomly sucks her pinky and says, oh, I remember, giggle, giggle, tee hee. So doing this match, it's Crowbar and Shane. Crowbar has Daphne now. Daphne is screaming constantly. One of the announcers says, Total go away heat. It's good to see Daphne back screaming again. No, it is not. It is terrible to see Daphne back screaming again. Strongly disagree. Uh, we are told that... Daphne defeated Miss Hancock in the wedding gown match. How? Miss Hancock tore her own dress off. Wow. Thank God we did not watch this show. Oh, I, can I can't even imagine. 
So the women get involved. They do 400 near falls like it's a G1 final. Shane has a face-to-face stunner and wins. And then Buff runs out to lay out Shane. This is a five-minute segment that had 30 minutes of material. <laughs> the franchiser. That's the face-to-face stunner. The franchiser. Yeah. So, yeah. Is Daphne the one in it that went to TNA and screamed all the time? And I just wanted to... Who was that? I don't even know. Who was the serial screamer in TNA that just fucking made me so angry all the time? Had to be Daphne, right? Had I to be. Yes, I, I have no right. I, I can't remember another incessant screamer. Was it Daphne like on Thunder, or was she in TNA? She was an Impact, wasn't she? Uh, me, I okay, no, I gotta look up. Yeah, because she got hurt there. Remember? No. Yeah, she suffered a career-ending injury in Impact. Well, that sucks. I'm sorry to hear that, but I don't remember her being there at she, all. Dude, she was there from 2008 to 2011. So are 47,000 other people. Well, I none of it was any good. <laughs> we watched it. Is the point? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was her that was the incessant screamer that drove me out of my mind. But yes, she uh, remember she faced. Uh, you dude, even dude, no one cares. She faced the large woman who crushed her, bruised her sternum, severe stinger, and a concussion. That sucks. Yes. So Pamela Paul Shock is interviewing Kidman. Here is his reaction to Tori Wilson disappearing in the string of the Shane. Rosie Lotta Love. That name I actually do remember. Yes, you will remember this. So Kidman says, skanks like Tori are a dime a dozen. She is nothing but a gold digger. If Shane wants his sloppy seconds, he can have her. He's focused on his career now. And that is how they wrap that up. It's done now. Well, I mean, for the time being, it could easily pick this up again next week. And Jeff Jarrett comes in. He's angry. And Jeff Jarrett and Kidman have a brawl. Smooth arrives. He is carrying a gold record. He is driving Tank Abbott and three count to the building. Jarrett, who we last saw brawling with Kidman, five minutes later, he's in the cat's office demanding a title shot. Yeah, he's mad. He's angry again. So Cat says, what you did to Billy Kidman was disrespectful. I'm going to book you in a match against him tonight. Okay. What side is Cat on? Is Fuck the if cat, I know. Is the cat a baby face? I or think a heel? he's a baby face. I, I'm ninety percent sure. I was so I can't even say that. I think I think this week he's a baby face. To Although he gets attacked by the young dragons. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's a baby face this week. Three count comes out for a promo. There's a randomly a ladder in the ring. Yeah, why not? And they say we have a gold record. Or Tank says, I should say, Tank says, we're going to hang this gold record above the ring so we can cherish it. <laughs> Why the fuck not? What else do you do with a gold record? There's no wall. They made the, their own wall. <laughs> a hook hanging above the ring to hang yeah. this on. The young dragons ruin the ceremony. What dicks. They lay I out love three... this because the young dragons interfere, and here's what's supposed to happen. They're going to beat up three count, and then Tank Abbott's going to get in the ring, and he's going to beat them up. And then the great fucking Muda is going to appear out of nowhere and miss Tank Abbott. That's what's supposed to happen. Yes. So the young dragons attack three count, and Tank jumps the gun, and he gets up on the apron. And he starts crawling through the ropes, and suddenly he realizes, young dragons have not beat up three count sufficiently. I am too early. So he stops and gets out of the ring on camera. Yeah. And the announcer would have to go, uh, Tank's having second thoughts. Which, I'm, by the way, I'm sure if Tank heard that, he beat somebody's ass backstage. But he waits for the young dragons to sufficiently beat up his friends. Then he gets in the ring. He goes after the young dragons. And the fucking great Muda, I still can't get over this, he shows up and blows mists into Tank Abbott's eyes. Yes. Tank Abbott was misted by the great Muda in front of my eyes. It's a thing that happened. <laughs> what? And boy, like you could tell watching Muda that his knees were killing him. But holy fuck, that guy was mobile. It's the Great Muda. Why do you think they call him the Great Muda? Well, I just have seen so much of the Great Muda over the last 20 years. It's not the average Muda. Or it's like he's on stilts. The swell Muda. I I finally, I I saw him moving again. I was like, holy shit, that guy could move. Well, not only that, I have always seen the Great Muda and thought that is... By pro wrestler standards, that's a man of average height. He's out there with the young dragons. He looks like Giant Baba in face paint. 
He's huge compared to them. Canyon is a promo. So, God, Pamela is hilariously awful. Well, she is, but <laughs> he's so bad. As bad. She's as bad so bad. As everything the WWF was doing to build Benoit as a challenger to the Rock here. Booker T, when they knew he was going to be champion at the end of the night, when he's never been a main eventer before, earlier in the show, he got pinned by Positively Canyon. Now, I'm sure there was bullshit involved. I think that was probably part of the swerve. But they didn't need a swerve. That's my point. They needed Booker T to look like a star. So Canyon pinned him. He wants the title shot. He's got a point. He pinned this guy an hour earlier. And Cat did not make him the top contender. He promises Cat is going to feel the bang. Goldberg arrives. He has ended the WCW career of Scott Hall. Okay. Jeff Jarrett versus Billy Kidman. By this point... All that fucking work <laughs> regarding Scott Hall and his contract. <laughs> he just gets retired. <laughs> I guess. That's the payoff. I guess. Okay. I have no idea if he came back or not. Jarrett versus Kidman. The show was a half hour old at this point, plus commercials. There have been maybe five minutes of wrestling. All right, I'm going to read my notes about the match here. Tori distracts him, Kidman. He brawls with Shane. She low blows him. Shane puts hits a DDT, and Jarrett pins him. Oh, God, Kidman kicks out. Why do a million things need to happen in every match? 800 more near falls, and Jarrett wins with a stroke. Well, it's because Johnny Ace is now in charge of putting these matches together. And if you watched the show, like as much as I hated the show, the matches were better matches. And yes, there were a lot of near falls, but like we got back and forth matches with finishes. And we'll get to Booker T and Mike Awesome in a second. But if you watch that match, I mean, people are going to get mad because it wasn't. But my point is, that was like an all-Japan match. They booked that like they would book a match in all-Japan. It was two guys having a world championship match, and they went back and forth. And granted, there were tables and chairs, which you wouldn't see in all-Japan. But they went back and forth. They, they beat each other up. And then the champion hit five straight moves on the challenger and then pinned him. I did have And was the better man. It is totally different than anything that we have ever seen on Nitro before. And I liked it. I see your point. Are you what the vacuuming there? What the fuck is that? <laughs> Goddamn hot water heaters just happens to be right behind my desk. Tremendous. That's tremendous. Fuck. Uh, okay, so, yes, there, there, there's... I thought it was overkill, is all I'm saying. There's, there's way too many near falls. Well, it was no. overkill in this match. It wasn't overkill in the Booker T match. No, Booker, the Booker T match was very good. This match was just nothing but near falls. And more, the, the bigger point is, why do an interference where a guy gets low blowed and then DDT to the floor if it's not... It's not even close to the finish. The match went four more minutes after that. What's the point of even doing interference if it's not... Anyway, I don't know. Steiner destroys Canyon backstage. Great. That's, well, Ty, Steiner, Steiner, Steiner's me. Mike Awesome. <laughs> I meant to write flirting, but it came out as feuding. But he's backstage talking to a heavy set gal. Nitro who, Girl Beef. <laughs> that's what we were told this her name. Excuse me? There's now a Nitro Girl Beef? <laughs> Nitro Girl named Beef. <laughs> okay, that's just funny. Come on. That, that, that is <laughs> Nitro funny. Nitro Girl Beef. Yes, out of nowhere... Mike Awesome is now the fat chick thriller. Yeah, yeah. So the cat... Okay, who, <laughs> hold on a minute. Remember everybody that was talking about how there was a Booker T. Mike Awesome world title match? Okay. Yeah. Right before that match, okay? I am not making this up. Shat shows up and says, I stripped Scott Steiner of the U.S. title last night. Because he wouldn't listen to me. And I am now here to present this belt to you, Mike Awesome. You are the new United States champion. Mike Awesome says, excuse me, beef. Shat, I don't deserve this title. Thanks, 
but no thanks. I deserve nothing. If I am going to be the champion, then I need to earn it. I was like, okay, so Mike Awesome is now the fat chick thriller, and he's a baby face. Yes. And he has turned down the U.S. title and says he wants to earn the U.S. championship. Yes. Okay. They go to commercial and come back, and it's Booker T versus Mike Awesome for the world title. Yes. Wherein Mike Awesome is totally 100% a fucking heel. Am I wrong? No, that happened. What in the fuck was going on here? (laughs) I thought that, like, there was a glitch, and I had been watching one show, and then suddenly I was watching another show. No. But lo, I was not. That's what was supposed to happen. These things happened in this order in succession. And it was their plan. It's what they wanted to happen. Now, the match was great, but great TV what match. in the fucking fuck was this? I hate this show. It's WCW in the world in the year 2000. So, the, yeah, they, they had a great TV match. Booker T hit his move and won. Uh, they did mention here during this match that for all the wins that go- Bill Goldberg has, he has never beaten Booker T. What an, what an easy, simple carrot to dangle. So Booker wins with the book end, which is his finish now. And then Steiner attacks because five million things must happen in every segment of the show. And then who should save but Mike Awesome? He went from a heel last night to a baby face with a cat to a heel against Booker T to a baby face with Booker T in the same segment. That happened. Oh, no wonder I couldn't follow anything on the show. I must talk about the next segment. <sighs> I loved, loved this next segment. Shaq comes down and he gets in the ring. He says, I am the commissioner. People need to stop disrespecting me. Don't ever do what you want to do when you want to do it. I'm in charge. Scott Steiner, he says, get your ass out here. And I thought, wow. I mean, if I were to call it Scott Steiner... I can think of a lot of things I'd say. Get your ass out here, low on the list. This man's got some balls. Little did I know. Scott Steiner comes down to the ring, and he's big, and he's mean, and he's jacked up, and he's crazy. He's running over construction guys in real life. He fucking gets on the mic, and he says, Shat, you have three seconds to give me a world title shot or I'm going to shove that microphone right up your ass. Ernest the fucking Cat Miller says, and this is a direct quote word for word, Ernest the Shat Miller said this to Scott Steiner. He says, You know, I call you out here for one reason, you stupid bitch. And the reason I call you out here is because I'm going to do what nobody else done. I'm going to beat your ass myself. I fucking almost fell out of my chair. I was like, do you have a fucking death wish? Holy shit. I rewound it and I listened to it again. I was crying after I heard it the second time. Scott Steiner beat the shit out of this guy. He beat the fuck out of the cat. He left him for a dead man. And Booker finally runs down to make the save. Then Canyon runs in, then Jeff Jarrett. And somehow Shat's still alive. And he signs them all to a four, a three-way. And then, of course, Goldberg's music hits he wants in. Shad makes it a four-way. It's a four-way match. Winner is going to New Blood Rising and getting a championship match. Shat was fucking amazing in this segment. He was amazing. That all happened. I loved it. But again, we were left with Steiner kills the cat, Booker makes the save, Canyon attacks Booker. Steiner attacks Canyon. Jared attacks Steiner. I, I, I need. I, I need. I. I, I they all track. want this here belt. I guess so. So yes, that's the upside. The, the upshot is the four way into the show. After the break, Goldberg broods for a while. <laughs> you know, I call you out here for one reason, you stupid bitch. And the reason I call you out here is because I'm going to do what nobody else done. I'm going to beat your ass myself. God, and then he punched. I loved it. And then he immediately punched him in the face. Yeah, and he paid the price. <laughs> Don't but he, he was a face. brave man. He was the bravest man I've ever seen on Nitro. At the pay-per-view, 
Big Vito defeated Norman and Ralphus. That's great. They're back. Yep. Remember when they got fired? And they were living on the street? Vaguely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they just announced Shat has rehired them. Okay. So we get a skit where Norman is training Ralphus. He's running stairs. He's trying to do push-ups. He's trying to lift weights. I don't know how many takes they did. I don't know how many stairs Ralphus actually ran. He appeared to be in legit cardiac distress. I was sincerely concerned for the man's health here. This is not good. And it went a long time, too. It leads to Big Vito versus Norman Smiley, although I guess Ralphus was in it, too. I am so over year 2000 hardcore matches. They brawled everywhere. They hit each other with shit. Wasn't any good. Here's the finish. Ralphus is on a table. Vito does a top rope splash and puts Ralphus at the table. And he's on top. So the ref says, well, that man's on top of that man and his shoulders are down. I shall count a pin. And he drops and starts to count one and two. But this is not the finish. So Vito has to pop up to his feet. Okay. Then Norman hits Vito with a chair and begins to dance. Vito collapses and falls on top of top of Ralphus, and the ref counts three, and Vito wins anyway. Why didn't Vito just pin the fucking guy? I have no idea. This was horrible. Why? Well, you know, I think I do know because Brian, five hundred thousand things have to have to happen in every segment. Nothing, not enough had happened yet. We needed more shit to happen before they could do a finish. Yeah, giant screaming thumbs down to that entire segment. My favorite thing on the show then happened. It also involved the cat. He is randomly walking backstage when music begins to play. And he can hear it, by the way. He can hear this music. The young dragons, one at a time, ambush him. He goes all Jackie Chan on them, beats their ass, and leaves them. I laughed, and I laughed, and I laughed. Cat versus young dragons is so much fun. Paisley needs the artist's shirt to be ironed. She goes into wardrobe where she meets Kiwi. Kiwi has debuted. Kiwi He's has debuted. just here now. He's just a guy in wardrobe. Although really I should be happy because this, this, this leads to the greatest spear Bill Goldberg ever did to Kiwi. Do you not remember this? I remember it happened, but I can't see it in my in my brain. Kiwi, I will spoil it for everyone, because I'll never forget it. Kiwi tried some sort of springboard move, and as he is flying back through the sky towards Goldberg, Goldberg hits a spear and sends him flying back even faster the other way. It just cuts him in half. It's amazing. Paisley, by the way, smitten by Kiwi. Lenny Lane is still around. He's in the crowd holding a sign saying, Use me. Madden tells a story. He's under contract, and they're not doing anything with him. Fuck. Welcome to 300 other guys. Not only that. And Lenny Lane sucked. I mean, that's the, the, the nicest that's the, way possible. That is the bigger point. There's a reason he's not being used not on TV. He's no good. So Lance Storm comes out. He is being a dick. He tells the fans, I don't dance, I don't sing, all I do is wrestle. And being Canadian, that's why I do that the best. Fans, please stand for the Canadian anthem. So he came out here, he scolded the fans and lectured them about what they, sh about what they should be enjoying, what they should be enjoying. He played the national anthem of a foreign country. He did everything they could do Everything he could do to get them to boo him. And that is a match with the artist where he's the babyface. And I don't want to alarm you. Nobody cared about the match. Paisley's on commentary. More entertaining and insightful than any WWE announcer currently under contract. Oh, man. She's, she's doing commentary and all these dudes are lusting over Paisley. It's grinding my gears. <laughs> She, the other she did Paisley. bury Lance, though, so that's just uh, life coming full circle. I guess so. So we get 500 more near falls, and Lance wins with the rolling half grab. Vampiro arrives in a hearse with a coffin. General Erection and Corporal Cajun versus Chronic, who are the tag team champions now. 
They beat the perfect event for the titles last night. Juventud Guerrero on commentary. Thank God. Just leave him on the mic the whole time. Entertain me. All these jabronis in the ring, he says, they sucks. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm talking the way I'm talking tonight. I listened to Hoovy tonight. <laughs> they sucks because the juice says so. Says this match is boring. It's in slow motion. It's not juicy. So the animals approach the ring. Jin Draco and a hair attack them. They both through the crowd. 500 things must happen. Match keeps going. 700 near falls going on. So Chronic's got a new move. The idea is Adams will do a power bomb, and as he hauls the guy up for the power bomb, Clark will do a top rope lariat. Okay, great. It's a this new is, device. This is their finish. Yeah. Not just it, a move. It's their finish. Yeah, yeah. Now, before you get to their finish, this match was so bad, everybody. It was horrible. Ray and Hoovy are at ringside, and Jin Drak and O'Hare run out and attack them. Ray and Hoovy hadn't even tried to interfere. They literally just got off headsets and they were attacked by these two madmen. Match is horrible. Brian Adams is awful. Brian Clark makes a comeback. He's absolutely wretched. Chronic then goes for their new finish. Their new finish. Not some random move in the middle of the match. This is their finish. What happens, Finney? So Brian Adams lifts... I presume it was Corporal Cajun. Lifts him up for a power bomb and he's standing there. And Brian Clark's in the top rope. They go, okay, he'll do a clothesline. It'll be like the doomsday device with the guy facing the other way, and that's fine. And then Adams, like, loses his balance and falls backwards. And Cajun hits the turnbuckle. Clark goes flying through the air. I don't think he hit anybody. They're no. all lying on the mat. They fucked up their own finish. To an unrecognizable degree. <laughs> they just leaped, and everyone fell down, and then they covered. And they pinned him. That was the finish. Their own finish fucked up. Their finish was the botched spot. This was one of the worst matches <laughs> in WCW in the year 2000. It was miserable. Horrendous. That's exactly the word I used, actually, the finish report. We see Vampiro backstage nuzzling his casket. Oh, my say. God. Then we get this... Fucking vampire. Okay, so he's got a casket. The fucking demon, Dale Torbor, gets out of it. Apparently they had a match last night, but now they're buddies. Sting got thrown off the Titan Tron and was burnt to a crisp, I guess. I don't even know how. I just remember it happened. So Asia gets in the ring. She's trying to pull Torborg out of the ring. Vamp tells him to beat his wife. <laughs> That's literally what he says. Beat her and choke her. Yeah. Be a man. So, and I'm not even making this up. The lights are out, but they go out. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. There's, like, purple shades in the crowd, but the the ring is in pitch blackness. You can't see what's going on. Fans are booing because they can't see anything. I, I'm watching on TV. I can make out three hominids in the ring. I can't tell if they're actually yes. living or, or mannequins or what, but there's... The lights are out. They yeah. go out. Then yes. Then there's lightning. And I, I think I had an epileptic seizure in the middle of this. I'm not sure. But there's a man in the ring. All you can see is his nose. <laughs> We're told it's Sting. He beats everybody up, and they talk about how he's been burned. What does he look like under that mask? And he leaves. He was thrown off the top of the Titan Tron on fire through the stage yesterday. Today, well, now, he's wearing a ski mask. To be fair, he's Brian. He's fine. To be fair, the burning and the falling was at the pay-per-view before this. What? Yes. I thought they said it was yesterday. It was not yesterday. It was, I don't know, three weeks ago, whatever that was. All right, fine. Still, still sucks. this is dumb. W and by the way, are you aware that Demon and Asia are still married today? Did not know that. They Good lived man. happily ever after. That's excellent news. A country and a demon. That's, that's fantastic. A continent and a demon. Yeah, exactly. So what happened here was... A guy who could only see his nose was using a baseball bat and hitting stinger splashes. And the announcers are saying, well, that's clearly Sting. You can tell from the body language. There's no question it's Sting. But the fans are either booing or in complete silence because they can't see anything and they don't know it's Sting. WCW, everyone. Yeah, Vamp beat Demon in that graveyard match they spent like $50,000 on or some fucking ridiculous amount of money. 
time for the four-way. It's only been an hour. I could not remember for the life of me who the fourth person was. I remember Jarrett Steiner and Ki- uh, Goldberg. I'm like, is, is Kibben in this? Shane Douglas? Who the hell is the fourth man? And then Canyon came out. I totally forgot about him. For all they have done to get the crowd to hate Goldberg, it has failed. They love him to death. It's all him on the apron as the other guys tag themselves in and do stuff. Finally, he tags in, gets one spear, the place goes crazy. Hits the jackhammer, jackhammer, Steiner breaks at the pin. Then we get Steiner and Goldberg. Now everyone's on their feet, and suddenly Nitro's a hot show all over again. It's like the past year never happened. So they're killing each other, and as they're killing each other, Jarrett steals the pin on Canyon and wins. And that is how they set up the top contender for a pay-per-view. Okay, so... I know you guys are aware of this, but this company lost $62 million in the year 2000. $62 million. And the reason for that is because nobody was buying their pay-per-views anymore, and nobody was going to their shows anymore, and nobody was buying merchandise or anything, okay? So their buy rates are already fucking shit, Okay. So they got New Blood Rising coming up, and Jeff Jarrett is the number one contender again to Booker T. Not Scott Steiner, not fucking Goldberg, not Sting. Jeff Jarrett is the number one contender for the world championship. I shake my head. (laughs) They're dead, Brian. They are deceased because of this incompetence. And then he started his own company. He did, actually. Which actually is not dead yet. Look, Jeff Jarrett is a fine performer. He's a fine wrestler. He's a fine promo. He should not have been the world champion of world championship wrestling in the year 2000. It's a disaster. You know what just occurred to me? It's actually really old news at this point, but it just occurred to me. Impact Wrestling, or TNA, or whatever you want to call it, that company has been alive much longer than World Championship Wrestling was alive. Hell yeah. Much longer. Like, twice as long, probably. It was, it was, uh, it was 1988 to 2001. Yeah. So we're talking, what, 13 years? Long, then. Yeah. 13 years. And Impact was 2002, and it's currently 2019. So That's 17 not, years. Not twice as long, but still Five much longer. years longer. Yeah. Anyway, the finishes, Brian. The finishes on this show were clean pin. Pin after interference didn't work, but the guy who got the interference eventually won anyway. Clean pin. Shitty fucking pin in a shitty fucking hardcore match. Ugh, wretched. Clean submission. Clean pin in a horrendous tag team match. And a stolen pin in a four-way. Hey. You know what? We had some pins on this show. A lot of pins. There were a lot of pin falls on this professional wrestling show. And I believe I counted one submission. So the story of Raw is it was horrible in the middle, but good at the beginning and the end. So much better than last week. And the story of this show was it fell off a cliff at the end, but overall much better than last week. I, I have a feeling, like I didn't know what to make of the show and it was done. Like it was, it was a good show by any means, but they've been so horrible for the past month or two that I didn't hate it. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I mean, it was bad, but it wasn't that bad. Raw on Monday was worse than this Nitro. The Raw that I watched from the year 2019. 2019. I, I, I Much play. worse than this Nitro. I can So when that. people... I, I, I compared it to WCW 2000, and some people think I'm being overdramatic, but I watched that Raw, and I watched a year 2000 Nitro, and Nitro was better than the Raw that I saw on Monday. So there you go. I need a break, Brian. You talk about oh, Nitro. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> Nitro, uh, July uh, 18 of the year 2000. Correct. Thank you very much. Is that really the date? Yes. Yeah. That's pretty good. Tuesday Nitro this week. Number it was? Two- yeah. Yes. What happened? I wasn't paying attention. There was something there was on Monday. Like a baseball uh, game or something. I forget. But uh, yeah, n- number 252, Tuesday Nitro. Opens with various clips of Scott Steiner being crazy and attacking people. This was the funniest fucking video. It's all about Scott Steiner, and they have the most overdramatic music you've ever heard. It was like music you'd hear on America's Most Wanted or something. Okay. Or or People's Court. It's just this 
this hilarious, wacky music. And Scott Hudson's recapping everything. And he says, if Scott Steiner worked anywhere else, he'd be behind bars or worse. <laughs> In mm. any other walk of life, were his exact words. I'm like, worse than behind bars? No. So he'd be dead? Sure. <laughs> what? He's not that bad. Oh, I don't know. Oh, there's there. The, the, Scott Steiner, if he acts, if, if Scott Steiner acted in the world as he does on Nitro all the time, eventually he gets shot. He he kind of he kind of did. At this it's time. not all not twenty four hours. <laughs> okay, but yes, he did like hit people with his truck and stuff. Yeah, that didn't happen. Construction guys and yeah. such. What I liked is I I, I guess to be the fair, the funny thing is in real life he is in real life, and he did do a bunch of crazy things that year. Yes. Mm-hmm. But he never went behind bars. No. Well, which is why, as Scott Hudson said, in any other walk of life, he would already be behind bars. But I'm pointing out that he actually had a legitimate other walk of life, which is being Scott Rex Steiner. Sure. And he, like, ran people over in his fucking car when yes. they were... I suppose. He never went behind bars. He never did. Well, they th- looked at him and were like, let's you- just slap him on the wrist. Well, the police come and they see him and, well, you better call the National Guard. I yeah. don't know what to do. So on Thunder, good luck. <laughs> no, no, it's easy. <laughs> he was being interviewed by Mike Tanay, and Tanay pissed him off, and so Steiner nearly killed him until Medeja pulled him off. And then they played the People's Court music to tell us how serious this was. <laughs> it's so violent they can't show it on TV. Mm-hmm. They did say that, yes. Uh, the first thing we see on Nitro is Scott Steiner attacking a car with a lead pipe. You know what's funny, by the way, is... Remember when Vampiro got thrown off that thing when he was on fire? Whatever the stupid thing they did to the pay-per-view, Sting. sting. I don't even know what it was, because you said it was the pay-per-view before. Something horrible happened in the pay-per-view, and last week they said, we can't even show you, right? but buy the replay. Yes. Okay. So we're not allowed to see what Steiner did to Tanae. (laughs) But there is no replay. That's true. So you know what that means? It must have just been so bad. Well, what happened to the pay-per-view was not necessarily ultra-violent. It was just legal means. Sure. They, they, they were afraid Hulk Hogan would sue them. Yes. Yeah. But Which this must have did. just looked so but horrible that they were like, we cannot air this on Nitro. I see your point. And yeah. think about that. Yeah. They showed stills of him choking Tanae. Yeah. yeah. Tanae is an over-the-top sort of fella. It's true. So Scott attacks his car with a pipe. Rick's out there trying to calm him down. Eventually they leave. And Stevie Ray is now part of the commentary team. As of this moment right here. Because uh, Scott Hudson was had the flu. Scott Hudson had the flu, so Stevie Ray is part of the commentary team. Nitro Girls Dance, which turns into the cat's entrance. The Nitro Girls were back on Nitro. Yes. Weird. <laughs> I, don't, don't I recognize none of them. You realize they lost $62 million this year, and they destroyed a car yeah, a on nice Nitro. One. For literally no reason. I forgot it happened until I recapped it right there. Yeah. And they gave away Goldberg and Steiner for free. They did. <laughs> they did. So the cat announces there will be a tournament for a new U.S. champion tonight. A one-night tournament. These are the first-round matches. Positively Canyon versus Mike Awesome. Correction, Vinny. Mike Awesome. (laughs) Which actually is a pretty fucking great name. That is a good name. (laughs) Mike Awesome. (laughs) Yes. It's even better. That's what he said. When you see, if you ever have to do the last name first, it would be Awesome, comma, Mike. Yes. Mm. Lance Storm and Buff Bagwell. Vampiro versus the Great Muda. Shane Douglas versus Billy Kidman. So then the cat, who's feuding with Scott Steiner, who's a lunatic, the cat begins to bury all the fat fans. This infuriates Scott Steiner. I don't know why. Because he's Scott Steiner. He destroys the monitor. He storms the ring. The cat thought it would be a good idea to come to this ring with exactly one security guard. And that security guard says, fuck this. And he vacates town. So Steiner just mauls the cat. Just... (laughs) Just grabs him. He wants a title shot tonight. They're in Detroit. He's in his hometown. Booker runs out, make the save. Rick Steiner's out there. Stevie Ray is out there. Eventually, there's more security guards. They all get separated. And the cat, who I'll remind you, 10 seconds ago was mauled by Scott Steiner. He again, for the second week in a row, calls Steiner a stupid bitch. Says, the only thing I'll give you is my ass so you can kiss it. He books Steiner against Goldberg for tonight. Says, kiss my ass, and runs away. This is a weird show. It is a weird show. When he first came out, he said he had some rules for the audience. He said he didn't want the people talking too loud during the show, and he wanted all of the fat-ass people to stay in their seats. Where was he at stomping grounds? Mm. (laughs) 
I don't know. Calling his mom, I assume. Buff is here with a Judy Backwell who's in a neck brace and staring right into the camera. Brian, if your mother is injured <laughs> and she has a neck brace... And My mother never would have gone to the show to get injured. Okay. What's this guy bringing his mother to the show for? Right. Well, in a neck brace. It only gets worse from here, guys. She should become less. Let, let's save this for when it's really worth talking about. Okay. okay. <laughs> There's it's more. not ever worth talking about, but I'll wait. <laughs> there is more to come. They're at the announce desk. Jarrett attacks Stevie Ray, lays him out with oh, a guitar. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Stevie Ray started a new commentary. Jarrett is him with a guitar. Jarrett is angry. He's the chosen one. He has all the stroke around here. Maybe it's because I hadn't been introduced to Carlito yet, but looking back, Jeff Jarrett in WCW is the most one-dimensional, nothing-happening character I've ever seen. Okay. Like, I don't even... Like, at the time, I guess I was just so flabbergasted that Jeff Jarrett was a world champion. I didn't actually look and think about it, but Mm -hmm. fuck, this guy has got... There's nothing about this guy. He's an angry guy mm-hmm. who hits people with guitars, mm-hmm. and he says he's the chosen one, and he has all the stroke around here. And he calls people slap nuts. He's got nothing else. <laughs> the other thing that makes it clear is that then we watched him do the exact same thing in TNA for a decade. Oh, it's true. <laughs> I feel like he had more personality when he was in Impact. Maybe I'm wrong. But here, he is just a... Boring robot. An angry one. I did laugh after he hit Stevie Ray with the guitar. It took him like three and a half minutes to actually fall. <laughs> it was the s- slowest. I've seen glaciers move faster. Well, I don't think he was hurt because he was just totally fine like five minutes later. That is true. For the record, let it be known that at its worst here, WCW is still able to throw brackets on the screen for 10 seconds. It's not that hard. No. Positively Canyon versus Mike Awesome. Well, they were allowed to call it a tournament, too. That's uh, Yes. It was not a series of matches for a championship opportunity. That's a strong point. Buff Bagwell and his crippled mom, Judy, are out there. Handicapped. Buff slaps hands with Awesome. So, first annoying thing. This happened in the opening segment and this segment throughout the show. The crowd sweetening was out of control. There's just random, generic, constant applause for two hours. It's drowning out the bumps they're taking. Funny you should mention that, Vinny. I was told, going back to Thursday's show, that Io Shirai was cheered wildly at full sail. Mm-hmm. And so they piped in booing. I see. Which oh. would explain why, as she was leaving, you could hear everyone cheering. I guess they were just cheering the whole time. Got it. So this show wasn't actually live? Did they film it on Monday? And Maybe. I don't know. They can, they can pipe in booze over the loudspeakers. That's true. Or just on the TV truck. They have a big, giant production truck. Yeah. I, I, adding, adding crowd noise is not the most difficult thing in the world. Right. So, let's see. You had a table. It's not a DQ. A nut shot on the apron. Not a DQ. Diamond cutter through the table. Not a DQ. So, Canyon nut shots buff. Mama Bagwell is angry. She attacks Canyon in her neck brace. Mm-hmm. It's just like Mama Stunt. Canyon grabs the... I don't know how old she is. The mother in her neck brace. Early 50s? She grabs this woman in a neck brace, gives her what's supposed to be a canyon cutter on the floor. Sure. <laughs> That's funny. He gave her a snap mare. Yeah. <laughs> and like one of the announcers called it a canyon cutter. And I believe Mark Mann called it a beal. There's a beal thrown out there. <laughs> like, it was way closer to a canyon cutter than a beal. Yes. That was not a beal. No. So think about this. You're buff. Your Thank mom you. came into this with a bad I neck. I appreciate that. You can walk into this with a bad neck, and now this man has dropped her with a neck injury move. She may be dead now. Paralyzed at the very least. A paralysis, by the way, that you yourself are familiar with having your own neck broken on this show not that long ago. Right. You're so angry. You throw this fucker into the ring, and you start pumping your fist for your move. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to hit a move. It's a dangerous move. Pump it's Bagwell a blockbuster. is the shittiest baby face I ever saw in my life. <laughs> <laughs> he hits a blockbuster. He leaves. I'm thinking, okay, they've done the table spot. They've done the bit with the old woman. They've done the interference. It's over. No, that's not the finish. That is not the finish. This map ke- match keeps going. On top of it, Awesome hits a ring powerbomb, and Canyon loses anyway. Mm-hmm. So why was that not the finish? 
Dude, I put over Johnny Ace doing the match layouts last week. I have already turned on this fucking Yes, match. it's so much overdone. So this, I've ranted about this a million times, so I won't waste your time. It's a tournament. Don't do short, shitty matches. Right. Or I don't care. But the thing is, they don't have a middle ground. They actually, believe it or not, they did have a middle ground for the finals. But every other match in this tournament, it was either a short bullshit match, or it was a short WrestleMania match where these fucking guys kicked out 85 finishers. Yes. Is this that hard? Apparently. Just do a bunch of decent matches and then have somebody win at the end. Why is it so fucking hard? The times on the matches, this one was like four minutes. Next one was two minutes. Four minutes with all these fuckers interfering, yes. mm-hmm. a ref bump, a run-in, a fucking awesome whatever, a canyon kicking out, and then awesome pins him anyway. I was fucking furious by the end of And this. a table spot and a woman getting laid out. And I still don't know what the point of Bagwell and Judy interfering was. Because right. it led to nothing. It led to nothing. Anyway. And then at the end, your winner got very large panties thrown at him. Big fat women's bloomers, we were told. That was the exact words. Big fat women's bloomers have been thrown into the ring, says Madden. Mm-hmm. Pamela interviews Lance. She is the dirt worst. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just begging for the WWE robots after Pamela Paul shock. The first thing she fucking says is, so you're pretty cute. Mm. And he ignores her. And she says, hello, I said you're pretty cute. I'm like, hey, fuck you. So Lance cuts a promo. It's serious business, not the dating game. Doesn't sing, dance, doesn't smile, doesn't joke. It's a tournament tonight. He's going to wrestle. All this sports entertainment crap goes out the window. I'm going to win the belt, rename it the Canadian Heavyweight Title. He walks off. Pamela looks right at the camera. And in reference to one of the WCW superstars, she says, what was that all about? Or who does he think he is? I don't even or know. something. I'm like, get off my fucking TV screen. Jesus. There's a million good looking women. A million. How many people in this world? A lot? Okay, there's probably a billion good looking women here in this I, I, world. I'll, I'll admit, I'm not I don't need this, this one professor. here ruining this fucking show and acting like everyone else is a geek. Buff is there with his mother, Judy, and his brother, John. John, he says, take care of mom. I'm going to go handle business. Meanwhile, Canyon and Smooth have a discussion. Lance Storm versus Buff Bagwell. Lance has a promo about his new attitude and how the fans turn their backs on him. In week three or four. Ah, is he, has he even been here a month? I think this is week four. No one's turned the back on anybody. You just got here. You know what this was? This was Becky Lynch after SummerSlam. Like, what are you talking about? Nobody turned on you. I guess. Nobody disrespected your anthem. Yeah. They just needed something for him to blame the fans. So he asked for the, he asked for the Canadian anthem to be played. Buff attacks him during the anthem like a dick. Then the fans chant USA. Yeah. This was far more disrespectful than the fans chanting this is boring during Alexa Bliss's match. I just want that known. So somebody here called Lance Stiff and Mr. Stiff took a huge backdrop. I want to note that. They're talking about everything going on with Buff's mother. And Tony says, Buff Bag was going through an emotional roller coaster. He may be out here smiling, but you know what's messing with his head. Dude, I'm watching him. I watched him like four segments now. He's fine. Mm-hmm. He doesn't care about his mom. Nope. He's out here. He gets to flex and dance and do this, and do his move. He's happy. So, again, Buff hits a DDT, calls for his move. And this video of the Bagwells on the screen, it distracts Buff. Lance hits the half crab. Buff immediately submits so that he can now escape to the back and rescue his mom. Now, we couldn't see what was on the big screen, but I know that somebody screwed something up. It was bad. They had a a long shot of the car and Judy, and it was supposed to be the attack, but the attack never got aired, and they had to air it after commercial. It was all kinds of messed up. Cat is in his office flirting with a nitro, nitro girl when the young dragon's music hits. I love this. I don't care. This I, was this was the Pink Panther and Yes, Kato. it's exactly what they, they stole from the best. He can hear the music. No one else can. But he knows Troll's about to go down, so he dismisses her. 
And then, of course, the young dragons come out of hiding and attack him. As they're all brawling, Stevie Ray saves, but Cat jumps in and says, Wait, wait, wait. They're my friends. We're just practicing. I did laugh. <laughs> Yeah. I laughed about that, and then I laughed after Stevie demanded Jared, and he got Jared. They they go back, and Shaft says, "Okay, guys, let's let's try it again. Let's finish." <laughs> and they all go, "Hiya!" And they all start doing their little. <laughs> that was great. It was awesome. I I turned on on Shat. <laughs> the cat young Here. dragons feud is great. It is it is entertaining. It's not even a feud. They're buddies. Yeah. Fair program. The cat young dragons program. Yeah, they're they're training partners. So we see the parking lot video. The Bagwells, Judy and John, are getting into a ring when Smooth runs up and says, John, who we just met two minutes ago, mm-hmm. something's going down in the ring. Buff needs you. And so Buff, or John, runs to help Buff, leaving his mother alone in the parking lot. A half a second later, Canyon's on screen. <laughs> he runs up. He drags Judy out of the car. Tears off her neck brace, grabs her by the head, and then conveniently moves off camera to supposedly give her a canyon cutter for the second time on the show. We then cut. Judy Bagwell's body is on the floor. All right? <laughs> Listen. I don't I don't mean this is tasteless, I know, but she's dead. <laughs> unmoving. She's not she's, she's not literally breathing. unmoving. She's on her face. Right? Okay? Her. She's on her face, her hands are down by her sides. She has passed on. She's shuffled off this mortal coil. She is no more. Maybe she's just sleeping. Buff Bagwell and his brother John are so upset. Why are you so upset about John? Because he just met him. He's a major part of the show. <laughs> okay. But you say his name like he should have <laughs> was, a different name. Yeah, it was disdain. I don't know. Like Jack. I have disdain for this whole show. It should be Buff and Jacked. <laughs> Yeah! Jacked Bagwell. Jacked Bagwell. So was that hard? That took you no seconds and no thought. Thank you. Just like a Buff's brother jacked. Yes. The point is, they are so distraught about the, dis- the, the the demise of their mother, they're on their knees kneeling over her rotting corpse saying, I don't know what happened. It's your fault. You were watching her. Go get help. Okay, fine. The worst baby face I've ever seen in my life was Buff Bagwell on the show. You need to watch Raw. Fair. <laughs> but listen, he was so unlikable and awful here. It's Buff Bagwell. <laughs> that is fucking wor- gimmick. At his worst. <laughs> Even when he was a baby face, his gimmick was he was an unlikable prick. Yes. <laughs> Which is great. When he was a funny heel, it was awesome. When he's supposed to be a hero. My God. <sighs> Did him and Miz ever team? Ugh. Hmm. Hope not. <laughs> That'd be all kinds of awful. Medeja tries to have a talk with Steiner. Steiner is sitting by the door. There's one door, like an open door, this arena. This is where Goldberg's going to come in. Mm-hmm. Steiner is waiting with a pipe to murder him. Thank God those huge arenas only have one door. Yeah, uh, the door. Yeah. This 10,000-seat building. So he tells her to leave. It's not safe. He's just going to kill Goldberg with this pipe. The Great Muda versus Vampiro in a U.S. tournament match. Vampiro is now accompanied by the Insane Clown Posse and the Demon. They're pals now. Yeah, what the fuck's going on? Yeah. Every time I watch this show, there's something new, and I don't know why. <laughs> it's mind blowing. Yes. Vampiro and the and Dale Torborg are fucking buddies now. Yes. For, for, for and where's four Asia? Four minutes here. Has she recovered from being blown up by the Titan Tron or whatever happened? <laughs> I don't know. Something happened and she blew up. Mm-hmm. I remember this two weeks ago. So. Muda's out there, and he wasn't super mobile. But, like, compared to the mid-2000s Muda, yeah. he was yes. Will Ospreay. You mentioned this last week, and I kind of blew it off, but in two matches tonight, it was so clear. He could move still in the year 2000. And the amazing thing is that... Well, first off, there was a grossly obese fan without a shirt on, about oh, four rows that up. I mean, what the just, fuck's going on? Maybe that's what Cat was talking about. Somebody put that a shirt on that guy, this or guy, something. This guy looked like he had puppies. So, Mudo, Ugh. the baby face... Beat him and 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 pin him with a moonsault. <laughs> That's what happened. Like, listen, you know, in The Observer, they write about how Vampiro was upset about this in the back. Like, he's being an asshole. And I'm watching this match going, I'd fucking be mad, too. They've been pushing Vamp for, like, two months now. And then they send him out here to do a squash job for the Great Muda, who, by the way, is just going to get beaten clean in the next tournament match, and that's probably the last we ever see of him. What in the fuck was this? My question is, why did he have to spray Madden in the face with the mist? So man could go backstage and do a gimmick with Kiwi. 
That was later on. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah that, 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 that's the reason. Okay. Yeah, the ICP got misted. Madden in his sunglasses got misted. So at least he had an excuse to not be like writhing in pain. <laughs> so like, I think I'm okay. The glasses got most of it. But yes, Mooner took all the match. The demon got on the apron. Nothing came of it. <laughs> Muda hit a Frankensteiner, but uh, uh, Vamp kicked out. So Muda hit the backbreaker and the moonsault and won. Mm-hmm. Which, we need more finishes where a guy says, that didn't work, I'll try this, that worked. That's fine. There's a lot of moves in this match. There was a lot of moves. And then the vampire when ICP turned on the demon and laid him out, so the faction broke up in their very first appearance on Nitro. Yeah, they, they said that Dale distracted Vamp. I did not see this. I don't know what happened. Dude, there was a lot of explaining what happened, and when you rewound, it didn't happen. That was one of the stories of this show. Steiner's waiting to kill Goldberg. Instead, Ralphus and Norma Smiley come in. So Ralphus is fat anyway. Yes. And they gave him a great big belly pad, too. So Steiner hits him in the belly with his pipe. And, and he Ra- yells, take it like a man. <laughs> Ralphus, and then he punches him in the face. <laughs> Ralphus doubles over in pain after this shot to his belly pad. And then Steiner actually did punch him in the head. <laughs> it wasn't that bad, but he punched him in the head and I laughed. And Norman's begging for mercy, but Steiner killed him too. Oh my God, Shane Douglas and Billy Kidman. <sighs> so Douglas is cutting this promo about banging Tori. And Shivani is like, think about this. Okay. Tori Wilson is now with Shane Douglas and Shane's about to wrestle her ex-boyfriend, Billy Kidman. What an amazing coincidence. Yeah, sure is an amazing coincidence. Tori looked spectacular here this evening. Love the young lady. Yes. Yes. Uh, franchise, she says, is more of a man than Kidman ever was. She was faking it every night. She couldn't wait to get her ass franchise. That is actually what she said. Mm-hmm. So they're doing this match. Tori trips Kidman. Shane Douglas hits his oh, finisher. Oh, fuck. The they Pittsburgh forgot blood. spots. <laughs> they fall down. This is horrible. Tori trips Kidman. Douglas hits a Pittsburgh plunge. Kidman fucking kicks out of Not furious. the finish. Kidman tries to roll up. Douglas kicks out. Tori hits Kidman with a chair. Douglas covers. Kidman fucking kicks out. I was so pissed. We're like two minutes in. Yes. I'm like, fuck you. And finally, Douglas... Here's the finish. No, I need to discuss this. Franchises his ass. Shane does, in fact, franchise his ass. The face-to-face stunner. He makes a cover. The ref counts one. The ref counts two. The ref drops his hand, but does not count three. Shane gets up and rolls over. The ref looks at Shane. The ref turns. The ref calls for the bell. A fucking atrocity, this man. This was fucking awful. Just the worst. It didn't go 24 minutes, though. No. Even they knew. <laughs> Even they knew. Let's do a horrible two-minute match instead of a horrible 20-minute match. I will. Yes, this was at least short. That is the only positive thing I can say about this. <sighs> so Goldberg, like six weeks ago, turned heel. A horrible idea at the time. Everyone knew it. He's been a bastard, a miserable bastard this whole time since. He shows up today, the friendliest Billy ever saw. He's shaking hands, he's smiling, he's talking to guys. There's some dude outside, it's some nice sunny day in, in, in Detroit, he's just hanging around with no shirt on. Goldberg has a shirt on, of all people, <laughs> but this guy has a shirt off. They're just chatting, shooting the breeze, having fun time. Steiner's still waiting for Goldberg. Tank Abbott tells us that NSYNC is down the road playing in front of an empty Silver Dome. Here's the real stars. It's Three Count. So Three Count is dancing. The Young Dragons get a ladder and attempt to steal their gold record. Mm-hmm. No, it's a match. I did not know this was a match until I didn't it was either. over and the bell rang. I could not for the life of me figure out what was going on. And then all of a sudden, Tony Schiavone did say, there's a match going on right now. And apparently, completely at random, in the middle of Nitro, they had a ladder match for the gold record, which apparently, apparently the Young Dragons had stole. What? So, so like, Three Count was trying to get their record back. Then who hung it up? Fuck if I know. I don't know what's going on. So, it was last week where they actually hung the gold record above the ring, correct? I don't remember. I don't remember anything on this show. <laughs> this happened. 5,000 things happened. This happened on... It had to have happened on Thunder if it was stolen. They did ten matches between these two teams. I don't remember this anything. Was the shortest ladder match I've ever seen in my life. And yet, there were still a number of times I was certain if somebody was about to die. Yes. Well, Evan got knocked off the ladder, fell all the way to the outside, grabbed his ankle, and appeared to be badly injured. Yes. yes. 
I uh, think he did injure his ankle because they do like a storyline on uh, either Thunder or next week's Nitro with Conan having him get this little tiny step ladder because he's hurt. Hmm. But they wrestle on the pay per view. Of course they Jeez. do. So apparently he can't be that hurt. So the ladder's up in the corner, and I think I think Shannon tried to run and like jump and land sitting on it. Yes, didn't work that way. He goes falling backwards onto his head. I was screaming throughout this for it's three minutes of hell, and then the Young Dragons get the gold record and win. And the bell rings. I thought, well, that's a match? I had no idea it was an actual match until it was over. And might I say, Tank Abbott, the best dancer in this crew. He is. He is by far. It's not even close. It's, it's a great actor, for being honest. Tank, Tank Abbott and 3 mm-hmm. So Goldberg walks in the door. Scott, the door. Scott Steiner, as promised, tries to kill him. Now think about this for a second. Their biggest star, Bill Goldberg, was just on the shelf for months because he put his arm through a car window and nearly cut the damn thing off. Right. He's been back about a month. And they have him out here fighting with Scott Steiner, who's swinging a real lead pipe, breaking real windows. They're punching doors. I'm just waiting for somebody's arm to fall off in this. Uh, this is madness. Geeks run out to break it up. Complete insanity. Rick, again, tries to calm Scott down. Good luck. Mike Awesome versus Great Muda. This is another one. It was in this match where Madden got misted. We all got yes. confused. Yeah, they yeah. went about three minutes, mm-hmm. and at least they did a real match with a real finish. But, like, the real match was Awesome pinned him clean with the running power bomb. Here's my entire in notes. In three minutes. Here's all my notes in the match itself. They do some stuff, and Awesome wins with running power bomb. Why <laughs> did Muda squash Vampiro if all he was going to do was lose to Mike Awesome and maybe never be seen again for all I know? Because the people, I don't even remember his career. The people making the show are dumb. Let's find out if he stuck around. I think he actually did. We'll never know. Well, no, we're gonna know because I'm looking it up right now, Vinny. Okay, but you can you can Carry talk on. about something else if you want to while I'm while I'm googling. Buff beats up Smooth until Canyon saves. Madden asks Kiwi to fix his shirt. Now, somebody remind me. There are Saturday Night Live fans in this room. Mm-hmm. When did Mango debut on Saturday Night Live? Was it around this time? The late 90s? Okay. So, yeah. I didn't realize at the time, Kiwi is a blatant ripoff of Mango. Sure. Because everyone, regardless of gender or sexual identity, they all are immediately smitten with him. Yes. Madden is obviously taken with young Kiwi, who blows him off. Paisley is back for the second week in a row. Week in a row. She wants Kiwi to fix her skirt, but the artist drags her away. So he actually sticks around till September of 2000, and fucking believe it or not... He teams with Vampiro, doesn't he? He wins the tag titles with Vampiro and New Blood Rising from Chronic. Oh, that's in just a few weeks. What? That's That's two weeks away. Keep that in mind, Brian. Keep that in mind. Holy fucking Christ. Actually, I saw that match. It was in Vancouver. I think... Yes, it was in Vancouver. As I recall, that was in Vancouver. It's a very, very famous show. For bad yeah. reasons. Yes. And as I recall, even though it's a very short drive for us, and we did not at the time, you know, we might get a show every six months, and we were right. huge fans, we didn't bother going. I went. I don't think we. I don't, I don't think Brian and I did. No. I'd wrong. have to look. So it's Shane Douglas versus Lance Storm. Before the match, I'm just going to read verbatim what Tony Schiavone actually said during the intros. Recently, the latest edition of WCW... Okay, I was told we were going to show a magazine. Now we're not. That was Scott Steiner in Iron Man magazine, I do believe. And I was told it was going to be something else. Well, that's the thing about Monday Night Show. You just never know, on many levels, what's going to happen. Now, they ended up showing the magazine. <laughs> later they did. Well, they, they flashed Steiner here, and they showed this thing later. But Did they not want to show it because Kimberly was on the cover as well? I don't know. They didn't mention that. She was on the cover. Didn't realize that. I got two things to say about this match. Let's get back on track Sorry. here. I realize Lance is my buddy and everything like that, sure. but it was abundantly clear in this match that he was the best worker on this entire show. Okay. And by the time the show was over and he was the heel U.S. champion, it was like, why isn't this guy the fucking champion? What does Jeff Jarrett do better than Lance Storm? Name one thing. He says slap nuts. Name one thing. <laughs> I'm sure with training. I'm pretty sure I could get Lance to say slap nuts. Mm -hmm. And it probably would be funnier than when Jared says it. Probably. So the other thing that I... It was a revelation to me in this match. I'd never thought about this before in my life. So Lance takes this backdrop over the top to the floor. And he practically does a handstand on the top rope and goes outside. Yep. And I thought, 
guy's a pretty good athlete. Sure. But if you recall, when he made his debut, I said he was a great athlete. So my my point my point of all of this is because he was in his gear, and because I see people doing athletic things in their gear all the time. I see. Lance doing something athletic in his gear, I was like, that's a pretty athletic guy, but my mind wasn't blown. But if you take the same fucking guy and you put him in street clothes and tennis shoes and he does the same high spots, you're like, holy shit, what an athlete. You understand what I'm saying? No. Because you're an idiot, Vinny. How when, many times when, have you ranted? When you see a person in a sporting event being an athlete in their sporting attire, okay, you're just seeing them in a sporting event, and your brain is like, they're doing a sport, of course they're a great athlete. Sure. If you saw, I'll give you a good example. If you were watching the Olympics, and you saw some gymnast do a round-off backhand spring, double-twisting full layout on the floor, you'd be like, fuck, that was very impressive. Then you'd see a bunch of other gymnasts do the same thing. If you're walking down the street in Seattle, if you're on your way to it's the weirdest stomping thing grounds, and instead of seeing a naked man, right. you see some woman down the sidewalk do a run off back hand oh, I wish. double twisting layout. I'd have been much happier. You'd be like, holy fuck, that's the most impressive thing I've ever seen anyone do ever in their life. Because they're in normal clothes. I see. You know what I'm saying? I do. I do. Thank you. I get it. I actually have a story. First of all, your rant is funny to me because I can't count how many times you've ranted about guys with no gear and how much you hate it. I do hate it. <laughs> but Lance doing all that crazy stuff in his fucking sneakers, to me, was much more impressive than him just doing it in his gear. So in, in, in high school, I once shared a Spanish class, Spanish class with her. Oh, dear Lord. Oh. And the, near the end of the period, uh, we're both in there cramming for extra credit. I was desperately trying to pass... She was desperately trying to get an A. And she finished before I did. And she goes up with Professor. And he goes over everything, checks this and that, does math. And she announces, yes, you've done enough work. You get an A. And she was very happy. And she goes outside. And, you know, the classroom window's there. Yes. And she does, I believe you said it was called an aerial. It's sure. A, a cartwheel with no hands. Yep. She, but fl- flying through the air, legs played. It's beautiful, gorgeous, graceful thing. And I thought, I know she's practiced for years to do that. But everyone in their life should get to be that happy once. <laughs> okay. But my point would be... Well, she was in street clothes, too. It That's... blew your mind because she was in street clothes. If she was in a leotard, I probably would not have you been You wouldn't impressed. even have thought twice a about it. A gymnast and a gymnastic Thank thing. you. Thank you. So the other thing about this Finally. match, of course, is that not only is Lance a great athlete and a great wrestler, he also probably wrestled uh, Shane Douglas a dozen times or dozens of times in ECW. Now, does your theory work the other way if Lance is sitting in his gear on the couch eating chicken? I've never seen anyone eat chicken like that before. <laughs> yeah, I probably would say that. Okay. Well, we've established anyone, anytime you get wrestlers in their gear in a normal setting, it's always great. See, it's the other thing with your your original theory before you realized and had a revelation and realized I was right, is that 99.99999% of this business, people in this business that work in their street clothes, suck. Okay. So you ain't going to see anything that athletic. That's fair. You denigrated me the Sandman. Oh yeah, you see Sandman do a, and quite frankly, if you saw Sandman do a flip dive over the top, you'd be blown away. I've seen him do flip dives over the because he's the Sandman. They don't look like Lance's. and he looks and dresses like that. Yes. Well, you can almost do anything when you're drunk. So anyway, Kidman's out there on the stage eating popcorn. This distracts Shane. They do 500 more near falls because they have to, and then Lance hooks the half crab. And even though they're both heels, and the, they're both heels, but at various points they're both playing babyface. But anyway, Lance hooks the half crab, grabs the ropes for leverage, and he wins. Mm-hmm. Billy Kidman then comes out to physically assault his ex girlfriend. Thank God, Lance Storm, a gentleman, was there to save her. Yes, the evil heel. What the fuck? <laughs> so Stevie Ray, in his segment earlier with the cat, he wanted a match with Jeff Jarrett, and Cat said okay. And we were then told that Stevie Ray, our former broadcast partner, is getting ready for a match. He never said a word. He was on this show as a broadcast partner for maybe 20 minutes. <laughs> he called one promo, and then Jerry hit him on the guitar. Jeff Jarrett versus Stevie Ray. So in a minute, 100 people interfered, <laughs> and Jarrett won with the stroke. Yep. 
They literally have no middle ground. They did for the final match, and that was it. Medeja threw herself at Stevie Ray. This is a flying body attack. She was going to do an axe handle, but apparently misjudged how far away he was. And all of her weight, all 110 pounds, landed on the back of Stevie, and it barely moved him. She just hit him with her chest. (laughs) Flying through the air, hit him with that. Those are deadly weapons, too. Yes. So... In this woman match, we got four matches announced for New Blood Rising. Jeff Jarrett versus Booker T for the world title. <laughs> Sting versus The Demon. Shane Douglas versus Billy Kidman. And in a four-way for the tag team titles, Chronic versus The Perfect Event versus General Erection and Corporal Cajun versus Ginger and O'Hare. Oh, really? There's no Vampiro in that well, list. Someone, someone must have... Uh, There's no Muda in that list. I can't wait to find out how they get to that. So, yes. Everything about this match... Stevie and this woman at match managed to hit the worst pedigree of all time, mm-hmm. and then 10 million things happened, and Jarrett won. Harlem Heat brawled with, somehow, Rick Steiner and Jarrett. I don't know. Steiner's throwing a tantrum backstage. Goldberg is stretching. Lance Storm versus Mike Awesome in the U.S. Tournament Finals. I hate to put this guy over again, because I never hear the end of it, but... He was in tremendous shape. This was his third match. Yeah. And he worked his ass off with Shane Douglas. I... And he had like 10 minutes. Yeah. It's not like this is a pay-per-view and you work the opener and you work the main event. Like, he finished that match with Douglas, went backstage, they had a one-minute fucking match with Jared and Stevie Ray. Mm-hmm. Then he comes out here and has to go another whatever with, with Mike Awesome. And he worked his ass off in this match, too. I forgot when he stands for the anthem with his hands behind his back how insanely thick his neck was. He had a big neck. He had a huge neck. So, yes, they had a good match. It did drive me nuts. I know they Might have been he had a pinhead. It's also possible. I had, that's the other possibility. It's a very small head. Uh, we had a chair shot that was not a DQ. They're doing spots on a chair in the ring, not a DQ. Just make everything no DQ if you're going to do that. Was it just me, or was Lance the heel, but was the baby face in peril for like 90% of this match? Awesome just hit him with move after move Mike after Awesome move after does move. a lot of cool stuff, but he can be very random with it. He said, I, I will open this match with like a powerbomb on our top rope splash, and then a work from there. Let me, give, let me have an opportunity to bury Lance here. Okay. They fucked up this Tornado DDT. There was a horrible Tornado DDT. It actually wasn't, I don't think, Lance's fault. So Lance is supposed to go for a Tornado DDT, and I think... Actually, I don't know, because the announcer said that they thought that Awesome grabbed the ropes, mm-hmm. but like... How the fuck would the announcers know anything? Right. They don't know what's going on. So they had to make something up because Lance goes for a Tornado DDT, and Mike Awesome just kind of falls to his knees yeah. and just stops. Yeah. So, and Lance is on the ground. He just lays there. So well, I think... I think <laughs> what what I, the fuck happened I here? don't know what's supposed to happen, but it's not what actually happened. But I think Lance thought, well, I have just gone splat on this mat. I will lay here, and Awesome will cover me. No! But the message never got relayed to Mike Awesome. Awesome just kind of got up and then was like, let's do some more moves. He did a lot of moves. I, I took it as Mike was grabbing the rope to stop the Tornado DDT. But he didn't. I rewound but, it. Right. He came nowhere near the rope. He went for the move and but, then just decided, I'm not going to take this move. That may have been it, too. Okay. He may have decided, I don't want to take a DDT today. Back of s- all the moves. I don't know. <laughs> Backstage, the cat is in suspenders. He has a referee shirt. He knocks on Booker T's door. They have a conversation we can't hear, and then they go inside. It is time for Scott Steiner versus Goldberg. The cat comes out to be the referee. Booker T is on commentary. Here, the first thing Tony says is, this match has a pay-per-view feel to it. (laughs) I'm like, no shit, because it should have been on fucking pay-per-view. Here, they finally got in the plug for Scott Steiner in Iron Man magazine. And they didn't talk about this, but they, they, they put the magazine picture on the screen with the following quote from Scott Steiner, which is one of the all-time great Scott Steiner quotes. I don't know how big they actually are. I don't measure them. It's too physiological. You can get psychotic always weighing yourself, measuring body parts. Okay. <laughs> That's a very Scott Steiner quote. I, 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 never, I never knew why he went so crazy in the year 2000. He was, was psychotic because he, he was kept measuring himself. their body parts. Yes. Wow. So my favorite style of wrestling is giant scary men hitting each other really hard yes. and throwing each other through the air. I thought that when I was watching this. This was a very short match, but while it lasted, it was glorious. Mm-hmm. Like, I hated this show. 
up until the Lance Austin match, which was good, and this main event while it lasted just warmed my heart. It's funny because when the show was over, I wrote that it was a good show, and then as I reviewed it, I realized <laughs> this show sucked. Until the last except 20 minutes. the last 20 minutes, yeah, it was good. Yes. The best part of this match is they're doing all their stuff, and they're being all hosses and everything like that, and... For some reason, well, I guess I know why. Steiner puts him in the recliner, and literally Steiner has the match won, but Shat has banned the recliner. Yes. So the referee, Shat, says, you got to break the hold. Steiner's like, fuck you, he gets up and he punches out Shat, who deserved it, by the way, because this is bullshit. So Booker then hits the ring, and the spot is supposed to be that Goldberg is going to go for a spear, Booker will leapfrog him, and Goldberg will spear Steiner. Right. But Booker either doesn't jump high enough or Goldberg just runs way too fast. And we have the most vicious looking, <laughs> legit chop block in the history of wrestling. Fucking Booker goes ass over like, tea kettle 10 feet in the air. You gotta imagine this because Goldberg hits him in the legs. So Booker spins in a center of gravity, so as his legs go flying up very quickly, his head goes spinning down just as quickly. Yes, but he fucking flips over 10 feet in the air, he gr- glances on the ground, he grabs his leg. I'm yes. like, oh fuck, it's, it's over. Yeah. His leg is hurt, but not that hurt. But he shakes it off, and he still does the biggest jumping Harlem sidekick on Goldberg you ever seen in your life. And I'm just loving everything here. Then out comes fucking Kevin Nash. <laughs> yeah. The conquering hero is here to save us. Hometown guy. Power bombs Goldberg. He power bombs Steiner. And the show ends. And I'm like, fuck off. Yep. What an ending. What an ending. That was the end of the show. I mean, at least they're saving this match like the real match for pay-per-view. They actually eventually do this match on pay-per-view. And I, if I recall correctly, it's fucking awesome. I can't imagine it not being. By the way, yeah. did you mention Kevin Nash strolling down to the ring, drinking a beer? <laughs> was he? Yes. Well, all I know is that look. Let's be honest. These power bombs are really cool. Okay. Kevin Nash's power bombs and Goldberg and Steiner looked awesome, and the crowd loved it. So, it was not my favorite thing, but I've seen dumber shit. Yep, it was uh, Fall Brawl 2000. Scott Steiner Goldberg got 13 minutes and 50 seconds. That sounds great. Yeah. We are at war. WCW Monday Night Show number 253, also July 24th of the year 2000. So. This was one of those rare deals. He comes out as a new Canadian heavyweight champion. Yes. And he says, I am going to play the national anthem. And to cut to the chase, he's supposed to be facing Vito. And I thought, well, clearly somebody is going to interrupt the national anthem, mm-hmm. lead to a match. I waited, I waited, <laughs> no. I waited for the first time in the modern era. <laughs> we went all the way through the national anthem. And probably the last. And then... Nobody came out. Right. So he starts talking. <laughs> yes. Yelling at the fans. They should be embracing him. The morals in this country, he said, have reached an all-time low. Like, the good old they're days. low, my friend. <laughs> yeah. But man, just you wait, dude. And he issued the open challenge. I love how Mark Madden is his mouthpiece on the mic and just, you know, respect the national anthem and he's trying to sing along badly. Yes. Badly, badly. I also, uh, Lance, by the way, called out Mike Awesome for their match in New Blood Rising. August 13th, he plugged the date. Another big fucking mistake he made. Having that match? Yeah. Well, yes. But he talked about how what a great match he would put on for that Canadian crowd. Says, I need a warm-up. I didn't want an open challenge. Out comes Big Vito, who immediately says, shit. He calls yes. him a Canadian piece of shit. Yeah. And uh, Lance says, I have put my Canadian title on the line. You should put your hardcore title on the line. Actually, it was weird because... Vito says, I have the biggest grapefruits. Everyone knows you can't kick my ass. And Lance's challenge begins with, I do this for a living. I'll put my title on the line. You put your title on the line. Doesn't everybody do this for a living on this show? Sure. What am I missing? I don't. I don't. I don't know. I need him to explain this. To I, me. I think on this particular show, Brian, you're you're. There's bigger fish to fry. There are far bigger fish to fry. But he's going to be on the show Friday, so I want to make sure he remembers to tell me why he mentioned that he does this for a fucking living. Now, now, shouldn't this match have been that Vito can and can wrestle hardcore style? It was. Lance, they use kendo sticks. I understand, but Lance was defending his U.S. title. He shouldn't have been able to. But it was a double title match. Well, right? that's hard, that hardly seems fair, because Lance was also challenging for I know, it title. seems silly, that's all. 
Well, it's pro wrestling, Craig. It is kind of silly. Thank you, Brent. They now, just had a match. It was, it was good. Yes. Yeah. It was fine. I don't know. Was Vino one of the Baldies in ECW? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So they, they probably worked a bunch before. Sure. So that, that helps. But they had a good match. And Lance is kicking out of everything, kicks out of the top rope elbow, kicks out of a lifting DDT. And they traded super kicks, and Lance does a roll up into the half crab for the win. It was a good match. This was one of those matches where I just know, because I know Lance, that he watches this and he hates it. Yeah, sure, sure. But it was very good. Yeah. There were a couple of weird spots, like there was something in the corner where Lance was going to do a headstand over, whatever they call it, and something went wrong. Probably Vito running too slow, but... I can see Lance watching this going, ah, got it. <laughs> that's, that's usually how it goes. They've also changed the name of the half crab to the Maple Leaf. Canadian Maple Leaf, yes. Lance so far, aside from turning heel so quickly, has been booked better than anybody else on the show. Including yes, yeah. the world champion by, by a far. fucking country mile. Yes. That's true. Burger Speaking Tia, of. Burger T arrives at the building, and then after a break, he comes out for a promo. Blatantly sucks up to the fans for a while. Runs down Jarrett, calls him chosen scum. Tells him, don't hate the play, I hate the game. Which brings out Goldberg. He says he's upset Booker kicked him last week. But then he said, Booker, you are a fighting champ, a champion. And tonight, I'm your partner. Dance partner. I, I, I eventually figured that out. Yes, I, like, I thought they were going to team two. So it's Booker and Goldberg against who? What's happening here? So yes, I said, I'm your partner, let's dance. Booker accepts, of course, because he is a fighting champion. But then the cat interrupts, and he has news. This was fucking classic. Shad announces that the fans are going to decide who faces Booker T for the title tonight. Mm -hmm. The fans start chanting for Goldberg. So the chat says, the fans will be able to vote on WCW.com. The fans in the building boo. Because, of course, back then you could not access the website That's on your right. phone. No. They're fucking shit out of luck. Yes. They paid their money. They can't choose. All these idiots at home get to choose. And Chad says, there will be nine other names on the list, including Sting. He doesn't remember any of the other names. <laughs> yeah. So we go to commercial and they announce that the names are Goldberg, Sting, Billy Kidman, who once beat Hulk Hogan three times and who ended up with 1% of the vote, Lance, Mike Awesome, Canyon, Buff Bagwell, Franchise, Stevie Ray, and Vampiro. Excuse me. Stevie Ray? I thought the same thing, but then I realized it's Booker T. And maybe some fans want to see Stevie Ray face his brother for the title. You're far kinder on that than I was. Well, I was, I was baffled by all of these names, except for Sting, who fucking will get to it. <laughs> Spoiler, well, he wins. <laughs> they I mean, ran a shoot vote, and the guy they wanted lost. <laughs> to Sting. Oops. Well, yeah. So, yes, they did Cyber Sunday first. Uh, and before they announce these names, Brian, I do want to mention Cat Fitton to fire Goldberg or suspend him or just kick his ass. Yeah. So Goldberg. That did, that did really well last week when you tried to kick the ass of Scott Steiner. Yes. So Goldberg grabbed him, Booker grabbed Goldberg, and Geek separated them. Billy Kidman comes out. Now, I believe that he's supposed to be a babyface, correct? Yeah. I think so. Okay. He's on commentary here. He says, it's Tori's birthday, and that's a shoot. And he has a gift for her. The gift, he explains. And he holds up a videotape. And... I know that VHS was still a popular thing in, in, in the year 2000, but this is the biggest tape I've ever seen in my life. It's probably beta. It may have been. Yeah. Might have been one from the truck. I never actually saw a beta tape. I don't know what it looked like, but it's this huge plastic thing. One reel. Okay, have one reel. Maybe it was beta. <laughs> Maybe. So he explains, <clears throat> this is a special videotape of myself and Tori Wilson engaged in some extracurricular activities. To revenge porn. Billy Kidman. The babyface. Yes. Is threatening his ex-girlfriend with revenge porn. Yes. And even says, I should have just sold this on the internet. Yes. Mm -hmm. What an asshole. Yeah. What a horrible human being. <laughs> That's what happened here. <laughs> All right. But More the fans in this era, yeah, because Lance was half right, they so badly want to see Tori naked <laughs> that they're okay with revenge porn. They are. Well, it is Tori. 
in his story. That's what they're thinking. And, and by the commentary, the uh, Pamela Anderson, Tommy Lee thing was out. I see. As this is all going on, by the way, this whole thing, when Kim is talking, David Flair comes out in a shirt and tie. Why was he in business attire? I don't know. Thank you. I thought I might have missed something. Miss Hancock is dancing. Yeah. This leads to a match. This fucking match was David and Stacy versus Major Guns and Chavo. Mm -hmm. And I barely paid attention because Good. fucking David was hideous. The women were horrible together. Dude, these women. Chavo sucks. And somehow in the middle of all of this, Miss Hancock somehow gives David a high cross. <laughs> then she yells at him mm -hmm. like it's his fault yeah. that she hit him. Major Guns rolls her up for the pin. This is leading to Miss Hancock versus Major Guns in a mud pit match at the pay-per-view where they will tear each other's clothes off as Billy Kidman on commentary is talking about revenge porn. Then Chavo pretends he's dead, so Major Guns goes to give him mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. For some reason, Miss Hancock cannot handle this. She breaks up the mouth-to-mouth. And then she tears off Major Gun's top, and somehow Chavo attacks David and clears the ring. Yeah, she tears off Major Gun's top, which Major Gun's does it to her own top every match, and she's mortified. Yes. Well, sure, but she didn't want her top torn off by this woman, so uh, this was an assault. Until Chavo pointed out, you know, you do tear a top off every single week, and she looked down and said, you know, I did spend a lot of money on these. I may as well show them off. And then she was happy again. This was yeah. a god-awful segment. You don't buy a new car and keep it in the garage. No, no. So Some people do. This match was tragically bad. Horrible. I was moved to tears. At one Wretched. Point. Bottom of the barrel, amateur hour bullshit. You were moved to tears? Well, not, About I'm, what? I'm exaggerating. Okay. I did write abject misery in wrestling Sometimes I form. am moved to tears. So we need to, we need to accurately <laughs> alert people when we were moved to actual tears. I gave this match minus three stars. Wow. And at the time, I was convinced it would be the worst match on the show. Okay. Little did you fucking Na know. Naive, hopeful. <laughs> Jarrett wants a title shot from the cat. The cat tells him to leave. Jarrett is angry. He wants a title match. Slap nuts. Because he's the chosen one. These assholes on the board arguing with me about Lance versus Jarrett and talking about how Jarrett's done some great promos. I'm like, fuckers, watch these fucking shows. There ain't shit that he's doing. Nothing. It's the same shit every week. Slap nuts, I'm the chosen one, and I'm angry. Over and fucking over again. There's nothing to the guy. He didn't even make the list for the I voting. I spat everywhere. He didn't even make the list for the voting. Jesus. For the championship. The, the, the last world champion is not in the top ten now. Right. So the cat books him against Chronic and threatens to suspend him without pay. So Pamela Paul shocks on my screen. Uh, She's next to Sting. Who and is, the mummy. Who's <laughs> wrapped from head to toe in black. The fucking elephant man standing there. Mm -hmm. First thing she says is, I'm here with Sting. If that really is you under there. Well, we didn't know. Well, it she, was a fella, a literally point. wrapped head to toe. Yes. You couldn't see anything, including his eyes. No. But somehow you could hear him perfectly. When he spoke, it was definitely Sting. He promised if he won the voting, he would win the title from Booker T tonight. And he warned the booking committee that this stupid mask is coming off tonight. So what? It's a shoot that like he doesn't want to be in the stupid outfit, but like the I don't booking even know. committee. Like, what the fuck's going on? So you were burned, right? That was Burned up story. crispy. Well, apparently, so, so you've been in... it appears he's upset at whoever booked him to fake be burned. That's what I got out of this. I hadn't thought of that. Why else would he say that? I have no idea. The booking committee <laughs> wants me to wear this, but I'm going to fucking take it off. So I, I thought he'd expose his burns. Whatever. I, I don't mean, know. he's not burned, so... I don't know, Ryan. Well, no. I know, Vinny. I'm pointing out how stupid this goddamn show is. It is very stupid. It's no, horseshit. None of it makes any sense. And it is worse than Raw Monday. By a fucking long shot. And we're not even to the bad shit yet. Mm -hmm. the, the first hour of the show, I didn't hate nearly as much. And then Tanae interviews Goldberg. Goldberg says, I'm de guaranteed to get this title match. And if I don't, the winner is leaving the building in a body bag. Chronic, right before their match with the Jeff oh Jarrett. Oh, my God. Okay, let me tell you what happened, everybody. <laughs> so I thought that Shat signed Chronic versus Jarrett and a partner for the tag titles. No. That was my understanding. Well, apparently he signed Jarrett alone versus Chronic for the tag titles. Right. Okay? 
So right before the match starts, <laughs> Brian Adams is heading the ring, and he says, Clark, let's go, or whatever. He, he knocks says. on the door. And you hear a bang. And one of the announcers goes, I've heard that sound before. Mm-hmm. And the camera goes around the corner, and there's Brian Clark laid out with a guitar next to him, okay? So the moment you hear the bang, and the camera starts going around the corner, they start playing Jared's music, and they cut to the ramp, and there's Jared on the ramp. Yes, with another guitar. And Mark Mann even says, I don't think it's possible that he could have got to the ramp that quick. <laughs> this, right. all, this all happens. Because he doesn't know what the fuck's going on. No. Right. And they're stupid. They're very so stupid. So basically, I guess what we're supposed to believe is fans, because we never found out that someone else hit him, mm-hmm. he teleported. Sure. Either he teleported, or he has an unknown accomplice who's still yet to be there revealed. There is no evidence of an unknown accomplice. And well, later, Brian Clark comes down to the ring with the broken guitar and goes right after Jarrett. That's true. Which is a strong indication that there was no accomplice. That Jared hit him. Maybe he got hit from behind. So they do a singles match (laughs) for the Tag Team Championships. Mm -hmm. They did a singles match. What happens if Jared wins? Who's his partner? We don't know. Vacant? We don't know. Sure. In abeyance. (laughs) In abeyance is his partner? Fuck, this show sucks. Probably would. (laughs) So Brian Adams and Jeff Jarrett had a match. Brian Clark lurches out towards the end with a guitar. He comes to kill Jarrett because he clearly... And he actually does. He thinks Jarrett hit him. There's no question about yes. that. Jarrett had hit Brian Adams with a guitar to the neck. So Clark came down and hit Jarrett with a guitar to the neck. None of this is a DQ. None of this is a DQ or the fucking finish. No. They decide to high time him through the table. The ref stops them, and so they put him through the table. No count. Jarrett flees. There is no count. <laughs> Fuck you. This show I didn't is do it. horrible. I'm not talking you. I'm talking this show. <laughs> Brian Adams at one point hit a big boot and a leg drop, and Mark Ben says, that move never wins. <laughs> he did say that. It didn't this year. The cat is backstage at his de- at desk trying to build a desktop toy when Vampiro also teleports in. <laughs> this was actually funny. So he's talking about, he mentions Muda, and he says, let me take care of this. But take care of what? Does, does Muda, Who's he? Does Muda have a problem with the cat? Okay, so... Or vice Vampiro versa? says, I'm going to take care of the great Muda. And Chad says, no, I'll take care of him myself. I'll kick his ass. Vampiro then says, I'm a ninja. I'll do it. You watch my back. He then says, and I quote, after he asks Chad to watch his back, I've got this stupid demon. He just doesn't get it. I buried him alive. <laughs> what? He called the demon an idiot. <laughs> the demon. Okay, so this was funny when I first heard it, but then when they come out next, he's friends with the demon. Yes, yes, that's right. After calling him an idiot and stupid and saying he's buried alive and doesn't trust him, they all come out together, and we saw Vampiro and the ICP beat up the demon like two weeks ago. Now they're all still friends. Right. So I was very confused by this. I laughed so hard at the line. I've got this stupid demon. He just doesn't get it. I buried him alive. That's three hilarious things in one sentence. I thought he was talking about a drug problem. So Pamela interviews Tori and Shane. Oh, stupid demon. I see. Yeah. Uh, Shane is furious at Tori because Billy Kidman is going to violate her trust and show this tape to everybody. It's her fault now. <laughs> She says, there was just this one time, and she storms off, and Pamela thinks this is hilarious. Have we talked about Sting beating Goldberg in the poll? So here's the poll results. I didn't write them all down. Sting wins 35% of the vote. Mm -hmm. Goldberg got 30% of the vote. Vampiro was a distant third at 10%. And then way, way down at the bottom, the guy who spent all summer beating Hulk Hogan over and over again. Right. Billy Kidman, 1%. (laughs) Wow. I laughed. And And I'm not surprised. No one chose Kimmin over Sting or Goldberg. But I laughed and laughed and laughed. Okay. (laughs) I believe this is the exact point where this show went from merely bad to traumatic. Vampiro versus the Great Muda with Cat as special ref. Why the fuck is Demon out with Vampiro, I wrote. 
when Vampiro just buried him in the last segment. Vampiro immediately attacks the cat, who was only out there because Vampiro had invited him. Everyone is bewildered, including Muda. Muda is literally in the corner going like this. Yes. Scratching the top of his head because he is confused. Eventually, he joins in. Even the demon joins in. And they just beat up the cat. And I think, okay, for whatever reason, I have no idea why, but they hate the cat. But no, cat has to make a comeback. He beats up the insane clown posse. And the segment Christ. ends with the cat standing tall. Jesus. Can you why? fucking imagine... Can you imagine? No. I was busy pissed off that Muda and Vamp are now buddies. I didn't even get pissed off at Shat making his own comeback. I think Muda finally did lay him out with a kick after he made his own comeback, if I recall correctly. The cat? Yeah. The segment ended with a cat standing tall. Are you sure? Uh-huh. Okay. Absolutely. He was alone in the ring as music was playing. It's fucking horrible. He beat up six men. And, and Vampiro was friends with the demon who he hates and Muda who he's been feuding with forever. Payment interviews Booker T. He says Goldberg can cry all he wants. Tonight is about the people and the fans, and they're calling the shots. Oh, I should I should clarify. When we gave the poll results earlier, that was not the final poll. That was just the up-to-the-minute results, but Sting did win. So Booker T is out there to face a mystery opponent. Okay. Allow me for a moment, Vinny, if I may. So they ran a fucking poll. Which, by the way, they didn't even run it on their 900 line to try to make some money. It was a fucking free call. Or it wasn't even a call. It was on the fucking internet. Mm -hmm. They want Goldberg to win, but Sting wins. So, Sting comes out dressed like the Elephant Man. And Goldberg just attacks him and beats the holy fuck out of him. Leaves him for dead, and they stretcher the guy out. Okay? Way to give the fans what they wanted. So, you fucked the fans. Yeah. You made Sting look like the fucking biggest loser. Yeah. Goldberg then demands Booker come out and defend the title. Okay? So, it is a world title match. Goldberg versus Booker T. Goldberg beats the shit out of the world champion. He sure He did. beats him. He bloodies him up. He beats him some more. He puts him in an arm bar that I was told was the worst arm bar ever, but it wasn't. Because at least he was trying to bend the guy's arm the way it's not supposed to go. He was doing it in, like, the worst way imaginable. I will take your word for it. But at least he wasn't trying to bend it the way it goes. All right. I have seen that a time or two. Okay. That's worse. But this was one horrible arm bar. He's beating him. Somewhere Matt Riddle's listening. In. He's fucking him up. And then Stevie Ray comes down to the ring. And he throws the towel into the ring. Right. He throws in the towel for his brother. Mm -hmm. My brother has been beaten so badly by Bill Goldberg. I am throwing in the towel and throwing away the world championship. You are giving up for him because he cannot do it himself. So the referee doesn't see this. Mm -hmm. So Goldberg kicks the towel out of the ring. Wipe himself with it first, but yes. But Shat sees this. He sure does. And Shet comes down to the ring, and he says, Everybody stop. The match is over. Mm -hmm. The match is over, he says. Goldberg, you've won. You have won the match against Booker T, the world title match. Right. But, he says, Booker T did not submit. He didn't give up. And so, therefore, Goldberg, you're... Not the world champion. And I thought, oh no. Vinny's going to go for a walk. And then he's going to show up here. Mm -hmm. And he's going to he massage his temples. He might walk here. And he's going to turn a weird shade of purple. <laughs> and after all these years, he's finally going to fucking quit. Oh, I need to do something about this. <laughs> I need to get a couple of these big cats here that I got. I got to get some sort of of gift offering to keep Vince employed after right. this. This was the biggest. This was the biggest. They said fuck you to the fans twice. Yes. At first, way more than that, actually. First with the Sting thing. Then by promising a title match and having the world champion get absolutely obliterated. He lost because Goldberg kicked too much ass. Mm -hmm. But he kicked so much ass. That Shat ruled the title must not change hands. Right. Due to excessive ass-kicking. I wrote a book on this twice. <laughs> and on this show, 
<laughs> there were two of the dumbest fucking things I've ever seen as a wrestling fan. But there was so much dumb shit in the year 2000 that I forgot all about this shit. It didn't even register. How? How? I gotta write this goddamn book for a third time. <laughs> Volume 3, the shit this I missed. This is a new chapter all on its own. They killed the world champion. They killed the number one contender. They fucked everything up right here. It was astonishing. <laughs> I must go back to the beginning of all this. <laughs> Booker T is in the ring. Sting's music is playing. The fans are cheering. And we see Sting, like, we see Sting as the elephant man step out on stage, and then they cut to Booker. And then Hudson begins to scream, Do you see what I see on the Nitro Vision? No, Scott, I don't, because the Nitro Vision is on a TV. I see Booker standing there. So Goldberg has to come through the set to ambush Sting, lays him out, destroys Sting. So not only do they fuck the fans by promising they would pick the contender to the world title, they further fuck the fans deeper and harder by promising Sting would unmask tonight, and then Sting did not unmask. So Goldberg challenges Booker to this fight. Booker accepts. Goldberg just smears the mat with him. Booker should have retired after this beating. And then, yes... The towel got thrown in. I was okay when Goldberg caught it and threw it back because the rest back was turned. Okay, I understand why this towel throwing didn't count. And then when Kat says, I'm stopping this match, Goldberg, you win. But Booker did not submit, and you did not pin him, and so you are not the champion. And I think the only reason that my head did not explode on the spot is because Goldberg's did and he turned to Cat, and he, he Goldberg was Vinny. His veins are popping out. His traps are the size of his of his arms, and his head screams for his screams. What? Because it makes no sense. He beat so much ass that he can't give you the belt. This is a worse by a country mile. This is worse than getting disqualified for, for kicking too much ass. Because yes. The referee does a five count. I understand if you break if you if you don't break the five count, that's a DQ. It's stupid, but I get it. He beat the guy via referee stoppage. He didn't do anything wrong. No, except I guess overshooting his target. Fuck. <laughs> yes, the heel was screwed on this show. Badly. Yes. Almost as bad as the fans. I was just astonished because Goldberg was a heel again this week because right. he was for sure a babyface last Absolutely. week. Absolutely. Okay. Now. It's been several hours now since I watched this, <laughs> and I've had time to think about it, and I still don't honestly know. Was this a worse finish than being counted out of a false count anywhere match? <laughs> I honestly don't yes. know. Being counted out in a false count anywhere match is dumber <laughs> That did break the laws this. of physics. Yes. This merely broke the laws of logic. Yes. This was just unfathomably stupid. Okay. So after the break... Booker storms into the cat's office. He demands the match get restarted, or he'll walk out of the company, and so the cat agrees. Buff Bagwell. You recall last week, he brought his mom to the building in a neck brace. And as a result, Canyon twice hit her with Canyon cutters yes. and left her for the great beyond. Yes, once on the concrete, by the Took way. Took her to the grave with Canyon cutters. Buff Bagwell has brought his mother and her neck brace to this building again. Yeah. And even Madden is like, why does he keep bringing her out? Shivani says, well, so he can keep an eye on her. This is a legit question. Why was she there? Why don't he leave her at home? Is Kayan going to go to her, her house? I mean, not in storyline. Not in storyline. Why was she on TV? I don't get it. Because Buff's an idiot. I mean, that's the fucking answer. This goddamn guy is an absolute moron. So. <laughs> I did love, Canyon's supposed to come out, but he doesn't. And Judy grabs the mic and tells Canyon to get his chicken shit ass out here right now. Yeah. I howled. I was not expecting that. Puff says, Mom, you can't say that. She says, I can say whatever I want. Canyon, you're a son of a bitch. Get your ass out here right now. I was like, I like Judy Bagwell. <laughs> Better than Buff. 
So at this point, the camera that is showing Buff and Judy is set down on the mat, and the cameraman attacks Buff. Okay, so I don't know this for sure, okay? But knowing what I know about the year 2000, this is what I think happened, okay? Buff was constantly crying and bitching about everything, okay? I think what was supposed to happen was the cameraman put down his camera and he gives Bagwell the canyon cutter. Okay. I'm positive that's what was supposed to happen. Sure. Bagwell probably cried about it because what happened was Canyon puts the camera down and then Buff starts beating him up. He attacks Buff from behind and Buff beats his ass. Yes. Buff throws him outside. Buff goes back to his mother and then Canyon gets back in the ring and then lays out Bagwell. So the the most ironic, funny thing about this is he looked like a much bigger idiot Not here. Really. <laughs> Because if Canyon had just been dressed as a cameraman and sneak attacked him and laid him out, fine. You got fucked by a bad guy from behind. Yep. Instead, you beat him in a fair fight, and then like a moron, you turn your back on the guy, and he came back in and hit you with the move. So anyway, I'm, I'm positive the original had to have been what was supposed to happen. Because this was just dumb on a show that's already dumb. Uh, what I wrote here was, I have seen more stupidity in the last 10 minutes than we saw all year up to this point. Yes. We didn't even mention, by the way... Judy doing the dance? Not even that. Didn't, uh... Canyon lays out Buff, stalks Judy backstage, throws her in a car and kidnaps her. (laughs) Well, I thought you would talk more about it. I'd be happy to. So, Canyon chases, Mm -hmm. in air quotes, Judy backstage. Judy is late 50s, early 60s. She cannot run. And in a neck brace. And so she literally walks from the ring up the ramp into the backstage area. Canyon has to do the slow run where he's moving his arms really fast, but he's actually not catching her as she's walking. Maybe moonwalking, yes. They then get backstage, and they show us the whole chase. She's attempting to power walk, but there's no power. She's just walking. Canyon is walking after her. She's like, oh, Chris, you don't need to do this. Judy, I'm going to get you. And they're walking, and they walk, 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 and they yell at each other. And Siri is going to respond to this, and they walk. And finally, he throws her ass in the car and drives off. I'm like, you couldn't do a pre-tape. You couldn't cut all that out. (laughs) What am I watching? The worst show in the history of man, Brian. Fuck. You're watching the worst television show there's ever been. The more we get into this, the more I'm convinced of that. Buff recovers and drives after Canyon to go rescue his mom. Pamela interviews Kidman. Kimmon has no interest in talking about his pay-per-view match. He wants to talk about Tori, the way she made fun of his private parts, and their sex tape. Fuck. Pamela is so excited by the sex tape. Pamela's hornier than Madden. Shane Douglas versus Mike Awesome. Shane is still very upset with Tori, the victim in this revenge <laughs> porn case. Awesome officially now is the fat chick thriller and has terrible new network music. Oh, my God. The women can't even get in the ring. (laughs) Man calls him the Mac Daddy for all the big old fatties as they're stumbling to try and get in the ring. I'm like, what am I fucking watching? They gave Canyon... There goes a teen audience. They gave Mike Awesome three large women, and they couldn't all fit on the ramp at the same time. I am not making that up. Yeah. One was trailing behind... They have a wretched this match. fucking match. And then they start playing the sex tape, okay? The goddamn worst sex tape of all time. Kidman, this was Kidman's plan, okay? Are you ready for this, everybody? This was Kidman's plan. He said to Tori Wilson when they were dating, Baby, just this one time, let's record it. And I guess she agreed. And so he set up a camera... He put her under the covers. Yes. I can't even say this with a straight face. He then went under the covers with her. Right. 
and they began making out under the covers. Right. It's hot. (laughs) (laughs) So for some fucking reason, everybody in the ring is distracted (laughs) by Tori and Kidman under the covers on the big screen. Right. I swear this is what happened. (laughs) Shane is distracted. Awesome suddenly pins Shane Douglas, and there's a fucking Thank dumbbell. You. Thank you. <laughs> what? <laughs> not not uh, that Shane is a dumbbell, or my God, there's a, uh, like a 20-pound dumbbell a goddamn bouncing across the mat. Where the fuck did this dumbbell come from? See, I, 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 I can't Who the fuck no used idea. the dumbbell? I, went, I had to go back and see, because I thought it fell did from the sky. Did someone use it? I thought, seriously, like someone threw it into the ring or fell from the rafters. They threw a dumbbell into the ring? <laughs> Who was there? Jim Neidhart? I don't know. So, <sighs> you're skipping a lot. No! Tori, did you talk about Shane using a chain in front of the ref? Oh, yeah. Like, the ref doesn't see it, but you also hear clang, 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 clang right yeah. in front of the ref. He doesn't even hear it. Bang his chains like Jacob Marley. Now, now I know Shane Douglas reached into his trunks to grab this chain. Mm-hmm. Do you think the Mike, dumbbell Aw- was there? Mike Here- Awesome reached into the cleavage so, of the big woman to pull out the dumbbell? So, when they were in the corner, and when Shane was striking Awesome with a chain... Tori gets in the apron, and th- at that point, she has the dumbbell. Okay. I don't know where she got it, but she got it there. When Shane is distracted by the sex tape, he gets thrown off. Austin is, like, sitting on the top rope. He reaches down to Tori. He grabs the dumbbell, and he hits Shane with it. Mm-hmm. Because it's not enough that this match had interference and a chain sex and tape. a sex tape distraction. We needed a guy to hit with a dumbbell as well. And then Billy shows up on the Oh ramp, my god, there's so much more. And he's got this pair this of underwear. This segment's like half over. He's yeah. got this pair of underwear that are way too big for Tori Wilson. Absolutely. And he's parading around with them. And I'm like, what in the fuck's going on? And then, somewhere in here, as he's showing off the panties, Lance is suddenly in the ring. Why? Mm. I don't have any goddamn idea, but Mike Awesome picks him up and gives him a running power bomb. This is the worst show I've ever seen. <laughs> this takes the cake. Uh, I am beside myself at how terrible these last 20 minutes have been. That's what I wrote. Then this- Shane beats up the production guy for playing the tape, and I'm like, for playing what? Kidman and Tori <laughs> under the goddamn covers? That's what you're mad about okay. now? So, yes, Shane grabs the guy out of the truck, throws his head into the wall very violently, and beats him and beats him. Billy Kidman, who I remind all of you, is supposed to be a babyface, comes down to the ring laughing, and says, go ahead, franchise, beat up that technician. Hey, asshole! If you know he's being beat up and it's your fault, go help him! <laughs> so Kim and then promises copies of this tape for everyone in back and all the fans. We cut to the back. Oh, gosh. The young dragons. Mm-hmm. Are very excitedly watching this porn. Fine. Then we go to Kiwi. And Kiwi is on my TV screen getting aroused by this erotic video for 14 seconds. <laughs> it's just a close-up of his leering, sneering face as he enjoys the show. I was so creeped out by this. <laughs> and I'm so... Thank the Lord above I was alone watching this. <laughs> Damn <it. laughs> Thank God no one saw me watching this. Like, I actually made a gift to share, and then realized I cannot put this on my Twitter timeline. <laughs> I can't have this. I can't have Kiwi's leering face on my timeline. I, I, I have some dignity. It's too lewd. $62 million. <laughs> Just want to remind everybody that is going to be on the board going, well, at least it was funny. So Shane is outraged by all this porn. He <laughs> vows to break Kimmon in half and also kill him. This fucking next match. I mean, if you broke someone in half, pretty good chance you killed right. I mean, I don't know for sure, but... So Tony Schiavone starts to explain what's going on, and I started to write it down. <laughs> okay. And halfway through, I realized, I don't fucking know, and I don't fucking care, and I'm not going to try anymore. Okay. There's a match at the pay-per-view, and I don't know what it is or who's in it, okay? But... <laughs> <laughs> They're doing a cage match tonight with four teams. Caged heat. Okay. So, I want everyone to listen carefully. 
I'm going to make this as simple as possible. They're having a four-team cage match. Right. You must escape the cage. The last person inside the cage, their team is out of whatever the match is at the fucking pay-per-view. Right? That is all correct. Okay. Sure. So this match starts in Jindrak and O'Hare and Palumbo and Stasiak and Ray and Hoovy and MIA. I don't remember who. Although I do know that one of them was Bill DeMott, because I'll get to him in a second. Corporal Cajun. These four teams are in the ring, and I'm watching them wrestle, and I suddenly realize the cage has a fucking roof. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now, some of you will say, well, they could go out the door. No, the door is fucking padlocked. Mm -hmm. So we have four teams locked fighting an escape the cage match inside an un <laughs> inescapable, inescapable cage. cage. Yes. Yes. Hell in a cell. This, this would be like, Vinny, if the Super Bowl next year, they announced the winning team will win the Super Bowl trophy. But there's no ball. I was just going to say. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. So I'm watching this fucking match going, how do they get out of this fucking cage? That's the only way to win. There's no pinfalls. There's no submissions. You must escape an impenetrable cage. Mm -hmm. So out comes the Disco Inferno. And he climbs onto the top of the cage. And he begins chopping his way through with bolt cutters. At which point the announcers are like, What's Disco doing? Why is he cutting a hole in the top of the cage? I'm like, thank fuck he's out here. This match would go on forever. So meanwhile, the worst match you've ever saw. You, this was so fucking the bad. The most horrendous fucking match is happening in the ring. I'm sweating. These fuckers get a ladder and they all figure out, well, we got to go out of the hole. Thank God for Disco Inferno. It's the only way out. So I swear to God, this is what happened, everybody. You didn't see this, but this was the idea. At some point, somebody gets out of the cage, and they set up a table outside the ring. Right. And they put somebody on it. Mm -hmm. On the top of the cage, there's huge erection standing there and looking down at the table, pretending like he's going to jump. Right. And Ray cuts him off. So this is what actually happened. In the afternoon, they were practicing this match, and Bill DeMott is on the cage, and he looks down, and he goes, that's a long fucking way down. But listen, if this crowd's going crazy, <laughs> and I get the guts, mm -hmm. I'm going off this cage. So happy he did not. <laughs> so him and Ray had a plan. The plan was... If I say, get out of the way, you're going to move, and I'm going to go over the edge. That's Bill DeMott's fucking plan. Okay. And they okayed mm. this. Of course they did. So, apparently what happened was, during the match, Bill got the guts, and he said, get out of the way. Ray didn't hear him. Mm. And so Ray didn't get out of the way, and the spot never happened. Can you imagine on this show, on this show, mm -hmm. the guy may not have actually killed himself, but he would have badly injured himself, maybe ended his own career. Can you imagine doing that on this show? Ray saved this man's life. So they brawled back and they got back into the cage and they're the last two guys, Ray Mysterio and Bill DeMott. And after all that... Bill slams him and walks out the fucking door that's now open. What can I say? Well, okay, go ahead. What can be added? No, a lot, actually. Well, actually... There's a lot. Conan actually had bolt cutters as well. Okay, I'm going to go to the beginning, because before Proceed. even that... Before okay. even that, Craig. Go ahead, go ahead. So, let's talk about just the beginning, when there's eight men in there, and it's a hell in a cell, so they should have space to do stuff. But they only use two cameras. One is apparently the first GoPro ever. It is mounted yes. in the very top corner of the cell, 
So you're looking, it's like watching football from the back row of the stadium. There are these tiny little men on my screen doing wrestling moves down there. And it's like a fisheye lens, too, and it's just yes, it's horrible. The vision's horrible. There's either that view, or there's a camera guy on the floor. He's surrounded by wrestlers, and they're all doing stuff around him, but you can't tell what's going on because he's right there. A body comes flying over him. Another body comes flying past him. Somebody bumps him from behind. I have no idea what the fuck is happening for like five minutes. So in the middle of all this, there was in fact a door. And it was not when the match began padlocked. The camera cuts outside and I see Jindrak is on the ramp. And don't feel bad about missing this, Brian, because the announcer said, someone's out already. Who is that? Okay. Now, it was, in fact, Jindrak and O'Hare. How did they get out? Rey Mysterio and Juventud Guerrera, when they were down, grabbed them, threw them out of the cage. That's right. And then closed the door behind them. They helped Jindrak and O'Hare win because they had a plan. Now, the announcers, I will cut to the chase. Their plan was they wanted to win. They wanted to be in the title match, of course, but they wanted to get MIA out. For some reason, the misfits in action are such a threat that even though Ray and Hoovy could have walked out the door, they chose instead to lock the door and get a ladder and climb up with Disco and then climb down rather than just win. Why? I don't know. Three separate times in this match... Because they're fucking idiot morons. That's why. I wrote, why the fuck would you do that in all capital letters? This is seriously unwatchable, I wrote. Here's where Kane gets the bolt cutters. And Disco's on top and all this, and they get the ladder. My favorite part of this bullshit. There's a ladder. There's a hole in the cage, and a ladder in the ring. And MIA is down, and Ray and Hoovy climb the ladder. I think, okay, they're at the top of the ladder. They climb out the cage, and they win. No. <laughs> they turn, and they have to do big splashes. Because even though they are heels, they must show off and do big giant spots off a ladder in this escape the cage match. So not only is this incredibly dumb from a storyline perspective, they're standing on top of the ladder. There's a camera in the ring, or in the, in the cage. We see them on top of the ladder going like this, and their victims are down here. We, every, anyone with half a functioning brain cell can tell what's about to happen. And right as they're about to jump, we cut to a camera in the back of the arena. We see the back of Disco Inferno. We see the cage he is standing on. Through the cage, we can just barely see like the top of Rey Mysterio's body as it falls. We can't see Hooventude at all. So they do these splashes off the ladders in a cage match rather than escape the cage and win. And we never actually saw it at home because the people making the show don't know what the fuck is going on. And they can't make a decent program. This went on forever and ever and ever. They climbed up on top of the cage. They teased falling off. They just climbed the fuck back down and, and general erection won. I hated this every bit as much as I liked Okada and Osprey. Okay. Wow. Yes. I thought this was a minus four and three quarter match. <laughs> wow. I was... There was a quarter star? Well, this is not the worst what match. What was the quarter star? This was not the worst match I ever saw. I see. This is not as bad as uh, 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 the, the Rebel match from TNA. Yes. Oh, my. But, but, but I was certain... This is the worst match in all of 2000. So you need a new shirt, minus four and three quarter that, stars. That one can't be mine. Yes. yes. I leave some room for deprovement. <laughs> but yes, the, the worst match of 2000, according to the Wrestling Observer, was Pat Patterson and Gerald Briscoe in the evening gown match. Oh, that was pretty bad. Fuck! Was, this was way worse. This had to have been worse. You kidding me? This had Get to have been worse. Get the fuck out of here. Jesus. So... <laughs> Stevie Ray tries to talk Booker out of wrestling. Booker says he can't. It's for the people. Okay? I can't do it. It's for the people. He walks away. The screen fades to black. When the screen comes up, Tony Schiavone says, here's a replay of what happened during the break. Yeah. What happened during the break was Goldberg attacked Stevie Ray, threw him through a window. Because there's one thing we've learned is that we must surround Bill Goldberg with broken glass at every opportunity. I'm pretty sure this was fake glass. I'm sure it was fake glass. Yeah. But still. But still. With, with this, anyway. <laughs> Let me just get over the main event quickly. Well, what's quick? So for those of you that recall, Goldberg in a title match beat up Booker T so badly that his brother threw in the towel, the Shat stopped the match due to excessive violence and beating of the world champion, and then told the challenger, I can't give you the belt because he didn't submit or get pinned. 
So this is the epic rematch. Goldberg comes out here. He once again beats the shit out of the world heavyweight champion. He's killing the fucking guy when Jeff Jarrett runs down and hits Goldberg with a chair. Why? Because Jeff Jarrett would rather face Booker T because he's a bigger loser. That is sure. That's the story. Goldberg spears and kills Jeff Jarrett. Shaq gets in the ring and kicks Goldberg. Booker hits one move in this match, a urinage. He covers. He gets the pin, and Goldberg kicks out at three. Goldberg jumps up, not selling anything. He beats the fuck out of Booker T. He spears him, and he lays him over with a jackhammer. Leaves him for dead, and security comes out to, I guess, cart Goldberg off. That's what you did with your world champion here on this show. <clears throat> he is a fucking loser. Yep. Twice. He's a, a loser. A two-time loser. But you're Goldberg's a loser. He got pinned again. Gold, the, yeah, but your world Gold, champion job twice and got I'm the honestly, crap beat out of him. I'm honestly more outraged that they pinned Goldberg on this show. It was, well, thankfully it's a show everybody forgot. I don't know how. This should be fucking historic. <laughs> this should be this in a fuck, The tape somewhere. of this show should be in the Smithsonian. As <laughs> bad as pro wrestling can get. As bad as television can get. Fuck me. A wretched show. Do we mention that Jarrett using a chair and Catherine a kick were not DQs, even the ref was looking right oh, at Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it was no DQ this time. The worst Nitro there's ever been. It may be the worst I've ever seen. I'm certain. There's some others that have been really, really, really bad. But this this was top five like, the, worst wrestling programs I've ever seen. There's ever. still eight months to go, so it, <laughs> I don't know if it's possible that one well, could be worse. Russo but, ain't around the whole time. Yeah, so we're we're nearing the end of when it can be this bad. Yeah, the, the, it may the, never be quite this bad again. It, the, the, this is for sure the worst Nitro so far. That's a fact. <laughs> it's I'm praying. It's barely arguable. Dear God, I know I'm not a perfect man. I have sinned. I'll say. I have sinned so much. But please, don't let there be any more Nitros worse than this. Amen. All right. Are Brian. you ready, Vinny? No! Well, <laughs> time. <laughs> the finishes of the worst TV show I ever saw were... Decisive pin in a hardcore match. Clean pin in an all-time disaster of a mixed tag match. No finish after the referee was attacked by wrestlers. No finish after the referee was attacked by wrestlers again. Win, win via ref stoppage that is not a title change because the challenger kicked too much ass. No finish or DQ or something when one wrestler disguises himself as a cameraman but gets his ass kicked anyway but still beats the other guy up and kidnaps his mom. Pin after a guy uses a chain and his woman interferes and he is distracted by revenge porn, and he is hit with a dumbbell, and then his woman's ex-boyfriend distracts her with lingerie, and then the winner of the match is attacked by another guy, but kicks his ass. A bunch of fucking bullshit eliminations in the most fucking bullshit Hell in a Cell match I've ever seen. Pin after interference with a chair and an attack by a crooked ref. <laughs> wow. Fuck. I should it, <laughs> it don't get much worse than that. I here. should sue somebody. <laughs> wow. I have been put through trauma. Hey, yes. <laughs> it's an unsafe working environment. It is! All right, everybody. That's it. Thumbs down, not recommended. We <laughs> do we not watch. Way longer than we should have. Cancel your oh. subscription to make sure you never accidentally watch it. Yeah, very, very bad. We're out of time, everybody. I want to thank you all for listening here today. I don't know if I've ever seen a show that was as shitty as this. But still, a vast improvement over the show the week before. And somebody told you last week that the yeah, one they were wrong. was worse, and this, they were so this wrong. This was absolutely. This was not a good show. No. A terrible show. And the the last segment of the show was atrocious. <laughs> like, I'd say an hour and a half into the show, I was very convinced that there was no way that this was worse than last week. Yeah. And they were trying very hard to change my mind <laughs> in that last thirty minutes. The, the second, they couldn't do it. The last one third to one half of the show was almost as bad as the stuff on last week's show. Yeah, this was this was way better. The then. first half was fine. This show opens with Booker T arriving, and the first thing Tony Schiavone says is, "What a week this man has had." And I was like, "No shit, he had the worst, <laughs> he had the worst night ever that a champion could have on Nitro last week." And apparently, we missed a bunch of shit on Thunder. Yep, I don't know. 
well, even what it was, nor do I care. But he shows up with Lavestia, his soon-to-be ex-wife. So things aren't going to get any better for him in the short term. No, well, I don't know. Upgrade, if you ask me. So anyway, so Lavestia, she goes through all the trouble of flying into town, driving Booker to the building, and then when they get, when they, then when they get out of the car, she attempts to talk him out of appearing on the show. That ship has sailed, lady. He's here. <laughs> he comes out for a promo. He's all beat up, but he's still here. Lots of people in the back are whining, but the fans demanded him. The bookers could not not listen to the fan. Didn't say bookers. It was a championship committee or whatever. The powers to be. May have been that. I forget. But So the fans wanted Booker and Sting, but that got taken away by Goldberg. Tonight, me and Sting are going to go to war. At this point, Jarrett interrupts. You'll never, you'll never <laughs> guess what Jeff Jarrett comes out and says. Dude, this, this was going along so good. And Jeff Jarrett's music hit, and it like somebody let all the air out of the building. He I, cries. I was, he was angry. He's angry that he's the chosen one. Yes. He's the one with all the stroke slap nuts, and he wants the belt. Yeah. It's literally like comedy at this point. How did I not see this the first time around? It must have been because it was like new, and I, I hadn't seen like another 20 years of slap nuts and the chosen one and all that shit. But fucking looking back now, it's astonishing. I, I don't disagree. So they get into a fight. Booker T hits the sidekick, but this damages his knee, which apparently got injured on Thunder. No, 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 no. This was last week when he went for the leapfrog. And got taken out. Yes. Uh, he actually did hurt his knee. Oh, really? And so they... Well, he didn't hurt it, like, bad, bad, yeah. but he hurt it. Okay. And so they did a storyline where now his knee is hurt. Got it. So he does actually have a hurt knee. Well, Jarrett puts him in a figure four in the ropes in a way that would do nothing more than a regular figure four. Sting comes out to make the save, and he now has... He has the Sting gear on, the, the black bodysuit with the scorpion on the side and the mechanics gloves, but he's still got a invisible man mask on even though last week he said that he was going to take it off no matter what the writers right. wanted yeah right now yeah. he comes out and he chases jared away and then he takes his mask off yeah no burns no not a one there's there's not a scar there's not a cut there's not there's nothing he he's may have, totally fine he may be prettier <laughs> than before crazy. the fire <laughs> also this means he flew to the building put his burns mask on Ran down to take the burn mask off with the yeah. face paint underneath. Yeah, so you would be swerved. Yeah. By the way, going back to Jared for a minute and letting the air out of the building, he is so uncool. He comes out on the ramp, and his first line, let me drop the bomb on your mom. He did say this. That is a quote. What? Well. It was cringeworthy. Then Jared said that he was going to give Sting and Booker a show tonight. Slap nuts theater. That's what he said. I don't want to see that. And he yanked Lavestia over the railing and hit her with a guitar and left her for dead. Yes. So after the break, Booker is outraged, but Sting says, you go to the hospital with your wife, I will deal with Jeff Jarrett. And Booker's putting her to the ambulance and he screams, I'm going to kill him! <laughs> they go to commercial. So let's keep that in mind. Lavestia has been hit with a guitar. Mm -hmm. She has been loaded onto a stretcher. Mm -hmm. She has been loaded into an ambulance. Right. Yes. And her and her husband are going to the hospital together. Right. Correct. Okay. They're leaving. So okay. as the announcers are recapping an angle, this is the exact quote Tony Schiavone uses to describe the Canyon Buff Bagwell thing on Thunder. <laughs> quote, Canyon forced Buff to agree to a match where his mother would be on the line. Yeah. And then he still put her in the Canyon Cutter, and then positively Canyon ran out of the building before Buff could even get his hands on him. What? Okay, so... So no one's watching the show, in case you can mm -hmm. tell. The next match is Buff Bagwell versus Vito with Judy Bagwell in a gimmick neck brace doing commentary. Okay? Appalling. Huh. It's ridiculous. Who would do that? So they're plugging... <laughs> they're plugging the upcoming Judy Bagwell on a pole match. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, this is one of those things... This is not the Mandela effect. Okay. Okay? I remember this. But Judy Bagwell on a pole is one of those things that is so 
fucking ridiculous. I'll mm-hmm. say. That the memory of it is like it is a terrible joke that somebody had. Yes. That nobody ever actually did. And now here I am watching it happen. Yeah. They did a Judy Bagwell on a pole match. I saw it the first time. Yeah. I fucking wrote about it in two books. Mm -hmm. I've been talking about it for 19 years. And I'm watching it here, and I can't believe my fucking eyes that they're going to do a Judy Bagwell on a pole match. It's like the reverse Mandela effect. Like, I, I can't even believe this actually did happen. You can't believe it's not a dream. Yeah. So, now, I swear to God, they're having this nothing happening match, and Judy Bagwell is on commentary. And she's horrible, okay? Mm -hmm. The whole storyline, and we have mentioned this before, but now it's like this really is the storyline. He is a fucking idiot. Yes. Okay? The story is he is bringing his mother to the building, but she being in the building is distracting him. Yes. From being able to do his job. That's a fact. What? So as he's wrestling, he will be, have control, and he'll look out the side, he'll get suspicious. Yes. And he'll go around and spin a cameraman around thinking it's Canyon, and the cameraman is five foot ten and 180 pounds with a buzz cut. So everyone, I'm not <laughs> making not this Canyon. up. I'm not kidding about this. Buff is supposed to be a popular Baby face. Right. Okay? His mother is supposed to be someone that you like and you care about. Canyon is supposed to be the heel. Right. Mm -hmm. This fucking moron keeps leaving the ring to tend to his mother that he brought to ringside. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of this, he ends up distracted and he costs himself the match. Yeah. Vito pins him. Clean. He goes for a sunset flip, and Vito sits on him and pins him because he's a better wrestler. <laughs> what an absolute fucking idiot. Yes. Like, it's mind-blowing. We we could do an hour-long show on the Judy Bagwell angle and everything wrong with it. Even his mother is yelling at him. And it actually took me a long time to figure out it was mom because her voice is just horrendous, okay? She, she sounds like the cigarette. You know, people sound like they smoke too much. She actually sounds like the cigarette. She's fucking going, don't worry about me. I'm fine, Marcus. And he's out there. I mean, I'm like, what the fuck is this? Are you kidding me? It's the worst. This is the worst. And it was better than last week. Her voice has all the sensuality of rubbing two bricks together. I'm not going to say anything mean about the man's mother. Okay. So I didn't say anything about her, just her voice. On commentary. You compared her to a cigarette. <laughs> well, she doesn't have a good commentary voice. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> so My mother wouldn't either. How do you so know? the storyline, as we've mentioned, for weeks now, Judy Bagwell has been attacked by a delusional lunatic, an angry, dangerous criminal who is continually attacking her in the parking lot, grabbing her by the head, and dropping her face first to the floor. Over and over and over again. She comes down to the ring. She does have a neck brace on, but otherwise, you've never seen a happier woman. She's having the time of her life. She's on TV. She's on TV every week. And sure, every once in a while, a 250-pound trained killer tries to take her head off. But it's time to wave and talk to the fans. Like, if this wasn't so stupid, it would be the most hateable thing ever. But it's so stupid, you can't take it seriously. It's very stupid. <laughs> Kiwi is in Cat's office. And yes, it's not Kiwi. It's Kiwi. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they, gotta, they gotta brand something. Per, per the network little... Uh, the, the previews at the bottom. Capital K-W-E-E hyphen. Yes. Capital W-E-E. I, I would guess that you have sold more gimmick Battle Royal shirts than <laughs> Kiwi sold anything in his entire lifetime. And the amount of money they spent to trademark Kiwi. Yeah. A money loser. $62 million, everyone. Oh, my Lord. And they blame it on AOL. So Kiwi wants a match with the artist. So the gimmick is, he is an effeminate fella. Sure. Who in the 90s, an effeminate fella is portrayed as a 
cowardly weakling. Sure. Right. Is that the s- it, safest way to put it okay. here? Okay. But the storyline is, the swerve is when he gets mad, he's a badass. Sure. That's, yes. That's the story. Okay. So, so he gets mad. He throws a tantrum, and Cat says, he, he slaps the cat with a slipper. And the cat relents and gives him his match with the artist. He also took the time to clear all the stuff off his desk, which there's a callback later. Okay. That he like I didn't notice it here, I noticed it later. Yeah, he threw all the stuff off of Cat's desk. Queewee did. Queewee did. Okay, I see I didn't notice it here, but thank you for bringing that up. Okay. Pamela interviews Canyon, and I know we've buried Can- uh, Pamela in the past. She had like the best question I've ever seen in a pro wrestling interview. <laughs> Did and, you write it down? And I Canyon did. gave the best answer. Did you write it down with the like in the middle? Not with the like, no. Okay. Her question was, why do you want Judy as your new Kimberly? Oh, before that, there's actually one that she asked. Oh, no, that was the first question. You're right. And he had no good answer. His answer was, he wants to teach that old battle axe to know her role in wrestling. Yeah. She has no role. She's Buff's mom. Now, the comedy is... Judy Bagwell is going to replace Kimberly. Yeah. He says, I want her to do for me everything that Kimberly did for DDP. Huh? And then the question I thought was so fun. No accounting for taste. It's Pamela says, and I quote, do you feel like a man, like yeah. Canyon cutting all these women? And he goes, yeah, I'm going to Canyon cut you. And he goes to grab her. And who should make the save for Pamela Paul shock? But... Mean Gene Okerlund. <laughs> Gentleman. Canyon grabs him, they cut away, and you hear a... Lah! And they turn around, and there's Gene writhing on the ground. He's been Canyon cut. Mm. Uh, they, they, I'm, so, I'm glad they were smart enough to figure out the, the off-camera Canyon cutter. Yes. yes. Don't, don't have untrained people trying to take bumps on cement. It's bad. So th- he gives him a Canyon cutter, mm-hmm. and Buff immediately is backstage. Yeah. And he's told what happened. And I swear to God, this is what happens. He runs over... He sees Canyon, he gives him a DDT, and they cut away. Yep. That's it. <laughs> that's that's it. Feud over, I guess. And I'm not talking like he gives him the DDT and he goes like this and he looks around, and he's like, hey, hey, and everyone comes over to take care of Canyon. He no. hits the move and they cut away. Done. No need to That's it. Match. It's over. No more in the next two hours. Yeah. I, I assume that's the end of the feud. I, I, Buff has now gotten his revenge. I no, guess. they have the Judy on a pole match. I was kind of hoping they would cancel it, because this seemed to be an end of the story. It's not the Mandela effect. This match happens. Sting is the, destroying shit. The the icon, the face of the company, is like a man-man. He's, he's supposed to be hunting for Jeff Jarrett, but he's just walking around hitting shit with his bat. Yeah. Just destroying stuff, shit for no reason. The artist versus Quee Wee. We are told that on Thunder, Paisley, who is still with the artist... But we have another wandering eye storyline mm-hmm. because Paisley was debut uh, oh, was flirting on Thunder with a debuting wrestler named Skip Over. What? Yes, Elix Skipper. It's Elix. Eventually, okay. it's Elix Skipper. They, re- they realize Skip Over is among the worst names. <laughs> I totally forgot ever. About Skip Over. And I'm, uh, Skip Over is the worst name ever. I'm, and this is in a segment talking about Quee Wee. So. <laughs> Kwee is super aggressive. The announcers are marking out for him. The artist is a dope German suplex. This is a very fun match, actually. Sure. And Kwee does a move where, like, he starts a side slam, and when artist goes up for a head scissors, Kwee just drops him on his face and pins him. Mark Madden called him Kwee is like the flamboyant Luthes. It's this just is like a bad show for Madden. It wasn't a bad match, but no, it's it was fucking the artist versus Kwee Right. With Kwee Wee being like this badass street fighter, and the artist is randomly in street fighting gear with his fist tape, which no one even explains. Well, they, that, that, because he was angry about Paisley flirting with Skip over. So he fucking taped his fist and just wore clothes? Well, two that's, weeks, that's the story. Last week. <laughs> last week. I didn't write it. You know, I was going to be in the Olympics and swimming, and I got really pissed off, so I wore my clothes in the water. Okay. <laughs> what? It's fucking dumb. Now, last week, Paisley was making eyes at Kiwi. Yes. And by the way, Mark Mann in this match, like, he was insufferable. Yes. He had a horrible night. He's going crazy about Kiwi and his finish, and I'm like, fuck, get out of here. Vinny, if I may. Yes. Next off, Scott Steiner barges into Kat's office. Now, Kat, who had just had his 
all his belongings thrown to the floor, quickly stands up, opens a drawer, and puts all his stuff okay. into the drawer. And I laughed See, and laughed and laughed. I, I saw that happen. What, did, did Cat just clean up his own desk? Yes. And he wanted to wash it. Yes, Cat cleaned up his own desk. He didn't want to I, stuff I to didn't get, get why at first, and now I realize, because Queewee Wee had knocked him off before. Yes. He didn't want to pick everything up again. I loved it. So, Steiner wants a title match. Cat says Booker's not even here, and if he does come back, he's got a match with Sting. And Steiner says, fuck that, which I don't think was a quote, but it may have been. You never know. It might have been. Booker, he says, has a pipe match with me in the back tonight. Bet he does. <laughs> Kevin Nash arrives at the building. <laughs> if there, if, this is a mighty big if, if there's a dumber man in this company than Buff Bagwell, it's Norman Smiley. Fair. He steps into the door where a pissed off Medasia is, is two feet inside waiting for somebody to come in. She's got her arms crossed. There's nothing welcoming or friendly about this at all. Norman shoots his shot. And he tries to flirt with her, invites her to do the big wiggle. So you never guess what happens. Scott Steiner wipes him from the earth. <laughs> Just ends him. MIA to a promo. They declared war against Canada. Yeah, they did. So they're, they're outnumbered. Explain to me. I mean, maybe I'm like a fucking idiot, which is possible, but... Right, he sends down. Lieutenant Loco... To defend the cruiserweight title mm -hmm. against Lance Storm, mm -hmm. who's easily 220, 225 pounds. Not sure. a cruiserweight. Was it explained why Lance Storm was getting a cruiserweight championship match? No one even questioned it. Okay. All right. And then he sends Major Guns to take out Miss Hancock in a hardcore match. What? Anyway. So Lance comes out for a promo, and he renames the hardcore title the Saskatchewan Hardcore International title. If you don't get it, Mark Madden makes sure to point out, can't use them initials. He, Lance gets to the L in title. He hasn't even gotten to the E yet, and Madden's already explaining the joke. So much for using the initials on that one. Yes. Like, Thanks, Mark, in case the, the dumbest of dumbest motherfuckers is watching this show. You explain that joke for them. He wants to rename the company World Canadian Wrestling. Which I thought was funny. World, World Canadian. World Canadian wrestling, wrestling is funny. Yes. Yeah. Don't that, blame Canada, blame yourself. There's a lot of good workers in Canada. I think it'd be all right. And they... They do a lot worse. You, 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 anyway. <laughs> so, this match starts, and I forget which announcer it was, but I did write this down. Oh, it was Madden, of course. It was Madden. I've got more good news, too, he says. Since Mrs. Booker bought a ticket... WCW is not responsible for the injury. There is no legal problem. What? What? <laughs> well. So any wrestler at any time. Unprovoked. Can attack any fan and WCW is off the hook? Well, it, this is complete bullshit, okay? <laughs> but and this was Madden who said this. Yes. Okay. So when she was first attacked, Madden claimed... That she had come over the guardrail, which she did. Well, kind of. But she was yanked she in. She did because her hair was pulled Yeah, over. she was yanked in. But his point was, because he's a heel announcer. I see. She came over the guardrail. I see. So it was her fault. He he couldn't even explain his own joke Yeah, this here. was stupid. So anyway, the highlight of this match <laughs> is the fucking logo <laughs> on the mat is very slick. In the middle of this match, Lance just fucking takes a bump. Yep. It's the classic <laughs> slipping up a banana peel bump. Yes. He's just like moving across the ring, and his feet go up, and his yep. head goes down, Yep. and he goes splat. And I laughed, and I laughed, and I laughed, and I went to Twitter to joke about this, and I see a joke, a, a tweet from Lance yeah. talking about the time he slipped on the logo. Yep. It was believe it or not, he told me. He got them to get rid of the logo. Good. Yeah. That's, it's just amazing that, like... In fact, I'm going to look up these. Nobody exact. else had this problem and or complained about it. It took that long. So anyway, they do the match. Lance wins. This 225-pounder. <laughs> he, he, he may have been 220, 215. I think he's probably 225. But anyway, he's now the Cruiserweight Champion. And as dumb as it was... That Lance became the cruiserweight champion, okay? He's now holding three belts. That's right. 
Tony Schiavone asked if anyone has ever held three belts before. Forgetting Ultimo Dragon held nine belts two right. years earlier, and he was talking about it. Nash, Kevin fucking Nash comes down to the ring. Yeah. And the first thing that Scott Hudson says as he storms down the ramp is, well, he's definitely not a cruiserweight. Thanks, and I'm like, Scott. like that fucking matters. So he comes down, and I mean, this is low praise, okay? Okay. But to their credit, Lance at least stood up to the guy before he got his ass handed to him. Well, he tried. Wow, Lance. you have gone so far to find the silver lining in this dark dude, cloud. <laughs> dude, nine times out of ten, when Nash comes down to the ring, the guys in the ring cower, and he beats their ass. The only at least Lance stood up to the guy before he got his ass. The beaten. only thing is Lance has just won his. Third I know title it's fucking stupid. Three it's weeks so in a row. fucking dumb. They do this shit all the time. Somebody wins, and then some other guy comes down and beats him up. This, Russo has done this like 10 fucking times in 12 shows. It's not even that. It's the comedy of nine-foot-tall Kevin Nash and Lance Storm in the ring together, and Lance looking up at him. He's, he's just big. Got, uh, There's no doubt he's big. It's dumb. It's just stupid. Why Absolutely. give the guy three belts and have Kevin Nash beat him Absolutely. up? Absolutely. Anyway, so he gets beat up. Lance, when he went backstage to talk about how slippery the logo was, warned everyone, to which Arn Anderson replied, If that thing can make you look clumsy, it will make the rest of these guys look like drunks chasing a hat in a windstorm. Which is a great line. Funnier than anything we will see on this show. Well, let me talk about Nash's promo here. Must we? Yes. This is the depths to which we have descended in the year 2000 in World Championship Wrestling, okay? <sighs> Kevin fucking Nash comes down to the ring and he says, there is a saying in wrestling called working yourself into a shoot. Mm -hmm. I heard what Goldberg said about me. Do we have to do this in real time? I've been doing this for 12 years. You may still be talking. And there's only one time that I was not a professional in the ring. There was a Canadian guy, he says who decided it wasn't his night because they were in Montreal and it was his hometown. So the next night in Quebec City, I beat his ass and beat him in the middle. Now, for those of you that have no idea what this fucking guy was talking about, he was talking about PCO. There was a night where Carl Ouellette decided, it's my hometown, I'm going to win tonight. I forgot that. And he won, and the next night, Kevin Nash gave him a beaten. And then beat him. Okay. Well, like a shoot, but he fucking gave him a beating. Nash is bringing this up in this fucking thing. Nobody knows what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he throws this in the line and he says, yeah, before I got into this business, I might have played some basketball, but I wasn't holding anyone's hands. And if anyone is petting anyone else's asses, it's the football players. Now he's making gay jokes. Well, that now this feud is... And breaking kayfabe. And the feud is about football versus basketball now. Says, I bounced all over the place. A lot of nights the NFL players would come in, have some suds, and we'd kick all their asses. I am not a wrestler, Kevin Nash says. I am not a wrestler. I'll say. I am not a football player. I am a fighter, and I don't lose fights. He then says, I can't guarantee in Vancouver, that I will be that professional. My knees are old and beaten up, but if you go to charge at me, one of these rickety knees might shove your nose into your brain. So we're supposed to believe Kevin Nash is shooting. We're he's, supposed to believe. He's threatening to go against the script yes. at the pay-per-view. And not only that, He's telling Goldberg how he's going to shoot on him. <laughs> yes. That's a poor plan. Now, by the way, if you think this is dumb, just wait until they what they, see what they actually do at New Blood Rising. It puts this shit to shame. I think that's the show they do I'm it on. I'm pretty sure that's the, the show we're all thinking of. I almost vomited listening to this. Let's see, yes, Ke Kevin Nash twice on this show insinuated that most of his matches are fake. Except, All of them. Except for that one in Quebec City. All but one. And this one upcoming with Goldberg. Yep. Those would be the only two real matches. Yep. Everything else is a fake fight. But he was a real fighter before wrestling. Yeah. And he's going to shoot on this guy in the ring, and he's going to tell him how he's going to do it. With his rickety knees. Yeah. 
Also, he's still going to get Scott Hall back in the company. I don't fucking know. Who gives a shit? <laughs> Steiner interrupts. Like, seriously, if you only watch the show, what in the fuck is he talking about with Scott Hall? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I wrote about it. I don't even know what he's talking. I mean, he's not there, clearly. No. But, like, why? No one knows. Steiner interrupts. I've never been so happy to see Scott Steiner. He calls Nash a piece of shit and attacks him. They are immediately separated by security. They have the most horrible fake brawl after this fucking supposed shoot promo. And then, after a shoot promo... Nash goes backstage, and Shat says, well, if you want to handle this tonight, you guys can go have a straight jacket match. Yeah. Cat was prepared. Well, <clears throat> explain, Brian, what the stipulations are for a straight jacket match. Or well, do you want me to? You, you put the guy in the jacket, mm -hmm. and then you can beat him until you get tired. Right. And that's how you win. Yeah. You beat him until you get tired, Yep. and that's how you win. Now, in between these two segments... This show's better than last week. I just yeah. want to reiterate that. By a wide margin. Yeah. We cut backstage. Jeff Jarrett's walking around happy as a clam. Sting, the mime from hell, who's supposed to be a babyface, a hero, has been wrecking furniture and destroying shit, searching the sky for like a half hour now. He's not even hiding. No. What an idiot Sting must be. So Jarrett comes out. Calls out Sting, and Sting just walks on out. Thank God Jarrett challenged him, otherwise Sting might have never found him. So we get Sting versus Jarrett, and all I can say, this was so much a Sting versus Jeff Jarrett match. Where neither one cares. Where neither one cares. Just a nothing happening, basic, Sting, not horrible, not good. Sting makes a big babyface comeback, and then 700 things have to happen. There's a, yep. a ref bump, and a chair, and all this fuckery with weapons, and... Sting eventually hits a death drop on the chair. The ref he, counts the pin with a chair underneath the fucking guy. <laughs> yes. He gets the pin. Jarrett loses to set up his title match against Booker T in two weeks at New Blood Rising. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, that's all true. We go to break. When we come back, we see an ambulance driving away. For the life of me, I could not have told you... In, in, in given 50 guesses, I cannot have told you who was in this. Apparently, it's supposed to be Jarrett. Right. I, he got death dropped onto a chair? Yep. Yeah. Of all the shit that happens in the show when people don't go to the hospital. But then he's back like 20 minutes later. Yes. So as the ambulance leaves... They're trying hard. I guess. To top last week's show? Yeah. yeah. Booker T pulls in. The Red Rooster is there. To immediately stooge Jared off. <laughs> so he was in the car going away. Then he stooges Sting off. He's that way. And Booker T goes to find him. Okay. Yeah, Booker's back. His wife his wife is hospitalized. Mm -hmm. And I guess they were like, she ain't gonna die. <laughs> it's like, well, I got a match tonight. So, see ya. <laughs> see ya, baby. Yeah. Okay, so there is a four-way tag team championship match at the pay-per-view. Well, we think. Because wasn't there a match last week and the losing team was out of the match? Oh, gosh. This I've man. wiped that from my mind. The point being, they are push advertising. They are advertising a four-way tag team title match. To set that up, we have a three-team tag team title match here. Yeah. Chronic versus Vampiro and Great Muda versus Mark Jindrak, Jindrak and Sean O'Hare. Chronic are the champions. With the perfect event on commentary. Is that who's on commentary? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't figure out who was on commentary. But somebody on commentary sounded exactly like Vampiro, which led to this moment where I think Vampiro is doing commentary, but I'm watching Vampiro in the ring. That would be a good And gimmick. I couldn't figure out if it was someone that sounded like Vamp or if there was a fake Vamp. Actually, Rock did this one time. He did commentary as he had a match. Uh, but I'm sure like, he had a microphone with him. Yeah, exactly. I, I like the idea of his own disembodied voice. <laughs> This match was horrible. This match. This fucking match. It was not as bad as the cage match. But no. It was, it was close. Everyone's out of position. No. No one knew where they were supposed to there be. There was no position for anyone to be in. <laughs> they were all, all six of these fucking guys were in the, and, 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 it's like an 18 foot ring. Maybe 16. They're all in this tiny little fucking ring. And no one knows where they're supposed to be or what they're supposed to do. <laughs> yeah, that's what I wrote. There's just bodies everywhere. Everybody's confused. Everybody's in everybody's way. And finally, Jindrak hits Vamp with a senton. 
And at the same time, Brian Adams happens to pin Muda. Right. And Jinrock and O'Hare are mad that someone stole a pin in an anything goes three way tag team match? You're being too kind to it. No, I'm not. It's much worse than this. So, Chronic, who I think are baby faces, are the ones who bring a chair into this match. Chairs get involved, bodies flying everywhere. So, the finish, the real finish is going to be Adams pinning Muda. So, they've got Muda down, and Adams just kneels by him and just waits. He just waits. Jin Jack and O'Hare do a bunch of shit with Vampiro. Jindrak does a big... He, he's standing on the mat and does a giant top rope rana because he's a freak athlete. And O'Hare does the big Jeff Hardy senton because he's, he's also a freak athlete. And after all this happens, Brian Adams is sitting there with his hands on his knees, looking around, watching the show, and then they do that, and then he makes the cover and the ref counts three. This was awful. And then... There's more fighting afterwards. Vampiro and... Or Muda mists both the dudes in Chronic, and they pose the belts... And for all I know, they may be the champs now. They're not. It's chronic. It's a dumb. The cat is in his office. By the way, if you haven't figured it out, we've reached the point where they're outwardly trying to do a horrible show. Cat meets with Shane Douglas and Tori Wilson. Says, I enjoyed what happened on Thunder. I'm looking around, what the fuck happened on Thunder? <laughs> we found out later. He says, tonight, I am booking Shane Douglas versus Billy Kidman. In a Viagra on a pole match. Yep. The famous Viagra on a pole match. And Douglas is outraged. Booker T meets with Sting. They confirm they're both okay. Jarrett's gone. They may as well follow through on their commitment to wrestle each other. I'm in if you're in. I'm in. All right, the match is on. Jin Jack and O'Hare do a promo with Chronic. See, this is a good thing to do. Since they don't have a NXT to send these guys to, they're going to have them do a promo. They gave them each one line to say. They said their line, and they were done. Great. They're mad at Chronic. It's a bunch of crap. They're green guys. Whatever. We're all about paying our dues, they say. So, fine. This accomplished what it was, what it was supposed to do. So, the setup for the Shane Douglas versus Billy Kidman Viagra on a pole match you will recall that last week on Nitro, Billy Kibben had a sex tape of himself and Tori Wilson. Shane Douglas's bright idea was to produce his own sex tape with Tori and show it on Thunder. But then he was having a rough night. He had his own stage fright, I guess. But he still took the tape into Thunder. And they showed it as he couldn't get the job done. What? <laughs> I, I don't know. Am I right? Did, did, did something more logical happen that I did not catch? I, I fast-forwarded through that part, so right. I, I missed it. But I must talk a little bit about the actual match itself. I have a lot to say about the match itself. So let me keep it quick. So, last week we had a four-team cage match that was maybe the worst match of all of the year 2000. And nobody ever talks about it. It's like it never happened. Meanwhile... People have been talking about this Viagra in a pole match for 19 years. <laughs> and the reality is, the match was fine. It's a million times better. It was Kinman versus Douglas having a wrestling match. And then at the very end, Douglas gets the Viagra. Shane gives him no, the no. franchiser yeah. as the ref is distracted. And Shane wins. But, like, on a scale of bad matches, like, it doesn't even register. No. Oh. They did not even. This may have been the best match on the fucking show, but because yeah. it was a Viagra on a pole match, like everybody was so outraged at the time. But like looking back, nineteen years, I'm far more appalled <laughs> by the previous match. Yes, I'm far more appalled by the cage match last week. This was just a dumb idea that was just like done and over with. So we're given the steps of this match, which are, and I'm not making this up. If you get the bottle of Viagra, you can use it on your opponent. I beg your pardon? <laughs> I thought of that, but yeah. now that you mention it, yes. that's a so, hardcore step. That is a very hardcore yes. step. So Madden has a thousand and one dick jokes. Sure. None of them are funny. No. Not a one. And finally, Tony Schiavone, the pro's pro, on the night where they're 
acknowledging the passing of Gordon Soley, Tony can take no more, and he turns to Matt and just screams, Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> so, Billy Kidman hits the unprettier, and he goes up to get the bottle of Viagra. But Tori Wilson takes the ref. It's a glass bottle. It's this giant glass <laughs> bottle. Like cod liver oil, is it? Yes. It's an old-timey looking bottle. <laughs> so, he climbs up. He grabs the bottle of Viagra. Yay, he says. I have a bottle of pills. Yay. And he climbs down, and he turns around, and Shane Douglas grabs him and hits the franchiser. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Could they have found a way to make Billy Kidman look like more of a fool? He had ten minutes later. Yeah. I, I disagree, but we'll get to that. So the the glass, the, for some reason, the glass bottle breaks on impact of this franchiser, and Shane grabs the shards of the glass bottle. The referee sees him with a glass bottle, and Shane Douglas is declared the winner of the Viagra and a pull match. And then, just to, to add insult to injury, I guess, Shane rubs Kibben's face in the pills. Yes. And he must ingest a lot of Viagra. Yeah. Oh, the humiliation. No, not, not, actually, that was supposed to be the idea, but Tony Schiavone is like, you can die from taking too much of that. That's true. I hope he doesn't have a heart condition. (laughs) ODs aren't funny. That's what he's talking about. Yes. Yeah, they actually showed a shot, and Kidman actually had a bunch of pills stuck to his lips and in his his mouth. I don't know where they got pills, but. I think vitamin C. Yeah. Sure they were. Major Guns backstage is putting on her makeup. Miss Hancock backstage is also putting on her makeup. Kevin Nash is repairing his straight jacket. Scott Steiner is doing curls with one of the stretchy bands. And Medeja looks up at him. Medeja hangs out with Scott Steiner all day, every day for months. And she just looks up at him. Your muscles are huge. <laughs> That's what she says. Miss Hancock passes by Major Guns in the dressing room. Makes fun of her. For putting on makeup, they begin to have, like, the worst brawl you ever saw in your Dude, life. let me tell you something, okay? I don't want to sound sexist here, or I don't want to be a pig, but, like, if you're an 18 to 34-year-old young male fan watching this show, which I was at the time, mm-hmm. how do you have Miss Hancock and Major Guns having a messy food fight and not have it be, like, awesome? Well, they found you know a way. <laughs> they can't even do a food fight. This was the worst, unsexiest, most horrendous, badly acted, badly performed. It was horrible. Not to mention, they have one table for catering for 400 people in WCW. <laughs> it's one table, and there's like a cake yeah. and a pie and some fucking carrots or some shit. And I was like, what am I watching? This was so horrible. They have this terrible food fight, and suddenly we cut from a food fight to... They said David Flair, but I never saw him. But I sure saw AWOL. AWOL is in the ring, and they say he's fighting David Flair. What? And then the girls brawl towards the ring in the dark. Yeah. You can't even see them. Yeah. They brawl their ass down to the ring. I don't even know where David Flair went. He vanished. I, never, I still don't think I ever saw him. He was, he was, I, I, he was out there. He was there. Hancock slams Major Guns, pins her with a body slam yes. after a food fight. And then AWOL looks at her and goes, ah! And she leaves, and that's the segment. Yep. Okay, here's... Uh, <laughs> I don't even... Here's what you missed. For a time, there were... nothing. There were four human beings in this ring. AWOL... That's impossible. David Flair... Well, maybe using the term human beings loosely, but there were four bodies in the ring. Uh, David Flair, AWOL, Major Guns, and Miss Hancock. And a table is leaned up in the corner. And they want to break this table because wrestling fans like broken tables. So what happens? AWOL and David Flair leave the ring. Miss Hancock has to try to whip 80 pounds of Major Guns through this table. It didn't work very well. Then she body slams her. Then she pins her. Then she tears her shirt off. Which Major Guns does every show anyway. Right. In preparation for the show of the pay per view, where you're going to tear her shirt off again. And then AWOL growled at her and she left. That was horrible. Just, just, just horrible. They oh. cut backstage. Okay. Kidman is being surrounded by Nitro Girls. Okay? <laughs> the best day of his life. All right. So the storyline yeah. 
is that the Viagra has kicked in. Yes. Sure. The Nitro girls have noticed. They all have wandering this eyes. Tent. They're, 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 they're going south of the border. And now they want to take him back to his room. Kidman, as a result of the humiliation of the Viagra, leaves with three women. Great. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> he was so uncool. <laughs> we you know what I'm saying? This is one of the lessons like, of the year 2000. Oh, my God. As much as I bury Kevin Nash for everything, Kevin Nash could have pulled this off. Oh, and it, Billy Kidman? No. Now I can't. Now I want. Now I want. Now in, in, now, in 2019, I want Nash to do the skit. He could pull this off probably in 2019. Yeah, I'm sure he could. There's no doubt in my mind. Kidman way, was not pulling this off. This probably doesn't work to pick up chicks. I'm I would imagine. Awful. I would imagine if you go to a bar and announce. Right. Look at this, ladies. <laughs> I had a bunch of Viagra. Look at me. He didn't announce anything. He was just walking around. Oh, he announced something. Look, you can hang a towel. Well, that way they were already there. They'd already noticed. They had, yes. So, yes. <laughs> Kim and left to go fuck three women. <laughs> way to kill the stipulation. Or I guess... Anyway, yeah, Viagra should use this in the commercials, actually. Sure. Well, I mean, he did get it first. So, he should have been able to use it. He just lost a wrestling match. Well, per the stips, it was... Anyway... It's so, in case we haven't talked about dicks enough, Scott Steiner is a promo referencing John Holmes. Yeah. In the year 2000. The year 2000. <laughs> All right. Kevin Nash versus Scott Steiner in a straight jacket match. There's no ref in the ring. They're still trying to pin each other. It's bad. No one's got any idea what's going on. Medeja hits Nash with the softest chair shot I've ever seen. So... He power bombs the shit out of her. I mean... He protected her. He, but he, like, it was a gentle power bomb. The storyline was she barely touched him with a chair shot, and so his response was, "I must power bomb her." That is how it came off. That's the story here. That's how it came off. Rick Steiner runs in and attacks Nash. Attacks Nash. They put him in the Steiner recliner. They put him in the straight jacket, which takes a while because <laughs> straight jackets are unwieldy. And as soon as the jacket is on, Steiner's music plays and the match ends. And he won. He was tired, I guess. I guess that was it. If only he'd gotten that Viagra. Be even more tired. Sting versus Booker T. So doing this match. They're both selling their leg. They collide. Sting rolls outside. And an arm. An arm appears and drags him under the ring. Just a big fucking thick arm. Yes. I'm like, whose arm is that? Little did I know. Yeah. I wanted the answer, and then I got it, and I was like, they fuck you on everything. <laughs> <laughs> that was the payoff. So he comes back up from under the ring. He's bleeding. But he's fine. He still makes his big comeback. Yeah. Because, because they must have Booker T be a geek in every single segment. Booker, Key, Booker T, the world champion, is now getting beat up by a guy who has got one leg and was just attacked by some mad arm under the ring. Eventually, Booker cuts him off. He hits the bookend. And he wins. The ref counts three by three point one. Sting is sitting up, going out of the ring. Yep. He wants to see whose arm this is to. He goes into the ring, and out appears the demon. Out appears what Tony Schiavone says, and I quote: "The man who used to be Dale Torborg used to be a man." <laughs> what? <laughs> now he's a demon, I guess. All right. Now. On paper, this is the end of the show. What actually happens is Demon, Emuda, and Vampiro attack Sting. Yep. At the same time, Jeff Jarrett comes through the crowd and attacks Booker. Yep. So they've got like 60 seconds left. Yes. And 10 minutes of shit to do. Yes. So the camera is like cutting back and forth like a strobe. Yes. Here is what I am told happened. No, can I tell you what I saw happen? Tell me what you saw <laughs> first. Okay. Jarrett comes down... And he's attacking Booker with a chair, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm typing. All of a sudden, I look up, and as Tony called him, the man who used to be Dale Torborg, who used to be a man, mm -hmm. the demon, he is holding a flaming sword. <laughs> That's what yes. happened. That's what they Kiss uses in concert. <laughs> That's what he had. You're not wrong about any of this. You're exactly is right. Revelations? He's got this fucking flaming sword here, and he starts walking towards Booker. Booker! I'm like, why are you walking towards Booker with a flaming sword? But then he turns... Fair question. And he, like, eats the sword or something, I don't even know. <laughs> but he... 
<laughs> blows fire. Spits fire. There's a fucking coffin, okay, on the stage. He blows fire from the sword onto the coffin, which, like, a little bit of fire goes on the coffin, but then it, like, gets extinguished because they're fucking idiots. They explain to us that Sting is in the coffin. Mm -hmm. That's what we're allowed to believe. That's what we're allowed to believe. Okay. So then, then, Booker is being hung upside down by his leg. Right. Yeah. Well, the coffin is on fire. Sure. Keep in mind, this all happened like one third of the time you've actually spent talking oh, about it. Oh, like ten seconds. Yeah. And then Jared gets this this guitar and he whacks him. He whacks Booker in the leg with this guitar, and the show goes off the air. Right. I was like, "Am I sure this was better than last week?" A guy just had a sword that was on fire. Like, what is happening here? Gene Simmons does that in every concert. It doesn't matter what he does in a concert, Craig. I saw this on Nitro. Dale Torborg had a flaming sword, and he blew fire onto a fucking coffin that they said that the, the sting was in. He, his gimmick is his kiss. I don't care what his gimmick oh is. Oh, my God. This was so dumb. Am I wrong, Vinny? No, you're not wrong. This is the wrong. dumbest thing I've ever seen. Zero percent wrong. <laughs> Poor Sting. He cannot get away from Dale Torborg. <laughs> or, this, or Vampiro. Or Vampiro. They're all, every segment they do is awful. He's just And stuck you know in the what field. the best part of it is? <laughs> At the beginning of the show, he comes out and he pulls his fucking thing off and just like throws away the whole storyline. Right. He's not burned. He's not hurt. It's all bullshit. And by the end of the show, he's being lit on fire by fucking Dale Torborg again. <laughs> yes. Now. Let all this sink in, our description of these events, and keep in mind, we're all unanimous. It's my heart rate right now. This show was a vast improvement over the show of the week prior. Yes. It was. It somehow. was much better. <laughs> well, I guess that's that. If you I mean, got... did I miss anything? I mean, we may have. It's entirely possible okay. we missed things, but to the best of my knowledge, no. Okay. Play the song, let's go home. Let's, let's do this. The finishes on this show were... Clean pin, clean pin, clean submission, and everything was looking great. Pin after ref bump and chair usage. Pin in a total mess of a three-way. Fuck finish in a Viagra on a pole match. You waited your life. <laughs> Fuck finish in a straight jacket match, which I was not waiting for. And pin after mystery interference from somebody under the ring. I can't believe you didn't get more out of fuck finish in a Viagra on a pole match. I was not put that much effort into it. Dude, that was your chance. That was once in a lifetime. <laughs> I was so sick by that point of all Mark Madden's dick jokes, I don't want to make you Well, that's true, that's true. But that one was funnier than any of the ones he made. Yeah, and I didn't try. Okay. Because I am funny. All right, we're out of time, everybody. You want to wrap it up for today? Oh, Rob's got something to say. So I would be re remiss if I waited until after the show. Hold on a second. No, keep going. Your keep mic's going. not even plugged oh, in. It's not? No, it's Here, not. Try, try, mine. Oh, Christ. Just trade places with him. Yeah, oh, fuck. Fine. This is going to be even worse. Yeah. Well, it gets better. Uh, so I'd be remiss if I didn't, if I waited until after the show to say this and not give you the chance to completely fuck me on the air. Uh, but the show hasn't been recording. Excuse me? <laughs> the video hasn't been recording. Not the whole time? <laughs> no. Great. Yeah. All right. Hand the mic over, Vinny. Thanks. Okay, so your your theory was if you told us here on the air, I wouldn't. No, no, no. I figured you would take the opportunity to. Okay. Yeah. I got nothing to say. <laughs> I had a much worse weekend. <laughs> well, anyway, this will not be available, everybody, at video.f4wonline.com. But guys, at least we've got audio, right? Yeah. That's right. I can tell. I mean, there was nothing funny. Are you, to are you recording the audio? Are you kidding me? I'm a professional. <laughs> All right, we're out of time, everybody. We're gonna wrap it up for today.